Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the show. You can get involved by calling 888-775-3773, 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E, Jesse. And remember, we have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show, jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about and you're busy doing what you're doing and you can't, you don't have the time to sit and watch the show right now, you can listen to it while you're doing whatever you're doing around the world. Because we are heard around the world. And for those flat earthers up and down the, the world by everybody and their mama. So you can be listening. You can podcast by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500. That's 641-793-1500. On your iPhone or iPad. And um, follow us. Hit the like button. Ring the bell. Y'all know what to do. JLP Talk on X and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. Subscribe, ring the bell. And um, to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk or rebuildingtheman.com. All right. It is Tuesday. And every Tuesday is country and Western Tuesday. Grandpa, tell me about the good old days when a line between right and wrong wasn't so hazy. And Grandpa, Grandpa when lovers never ever ran away, stay beside one another, oh, my. Whoa, whoa, Grandpa, tell me about the good Amazing. And by, by the way, my biblical question, my biblical question for this week, it's a doozy, a real doozy. It's so, it's so much of a doozy, I don't know what to tell you. Do you worship yourself? Do you worship yourself? Hassan, do you worship yourself? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> How far are one of the experts here? No, nah, I worship Sandy. <laughs> well, that's for sure. <laughs> I think everybody the mama knows that. That's you a good, got rabies from Sandy, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. I, you know, they're always good questions, and I'm always every week. It's they just get better and better. <laughs> it's an interesting thing to think about. And so the answer is, or do you want to think about it? Yeah, more? I need a few more days to smoke on it. Oh, okay, <laughs> nice. It's a, it's a deep question. I um, Something strange is happening in my country and in all of the Western countries. And, and I think that most people are distracted from what's really going on. I could be wrong, but something strange is happening. Yes, it's a spiritual battle for sure going on inside each individual 
and outside and you're inside of others between good and evil. That's for sure. But something more is going on, which is encouraged by evil, by the way. And I, I was looking at a report. You know how those three so-called uh, heads of some of the supposedly top universities gave a talk uh, before a government committee there in Washington, D.C., about the attack upon Jews, and uh, one from Harvard, one from another school, IT, and another school, right? And then there, amongst them, there was a black woman with nappy hair, short, fro. And her last name was Gay. And they asked her about the attack, Claudine, Claudine Gay, a black, she black. And they asked her about the attack upon the Jews. She gave some little fancy answer, like all three of the women did. And, um, and um, one of the women, I think she was white, that she, got, she had to resign. They forced her to resign. And uh, do we know what school, remember what school she was from, uh, Sean? U, 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 UPenn, University of Pennsylvania. She was forced to resign. And I don't know what happened to the next woman. I, I don't know if she said the right things at the right time. So I haven't heard anything about her. But for the black woman, the, the, uh, the, uh, the donors of that school and some of the, the people, the kids that go to that school want her to resign, Claudine, Claudine Gay. They want her to resign. But there are, uh, according to reports, several faculty members at Claudine Gay School. Uh, she is so-called, this woman is the, the principal of the college, whatever you call them. And, and they don't want her to resign. And a million dollars have been taken away and more from the school. And they are fighting, some people are fighting to keep Claudine there. And um, one of the reasons they're fighting to see Claudine there is because she's black. I don't care what nobody says. Not because she's qualified, but because she's black. And they know that black people, when put into white people world, they're going to destroy it. And I don't think anyone was surprised when Claudine then speak out against the violence on Jews, whatever they're supposed to be saying. But they're trying to keep Claudine at the school because she's black and she's uh, destructive, not good for the school. As a matter of fact, I heard one report that says that this woman is the worst thing to ever, and I'm paraphrasing, worst thing to ever happen to University of Pennsylvania, I mean, wherever she is. What school is she at? Oh, Harvard, uh, Claudine Gay is the worst thing that ever happened to Harvard since its existence. And so remember I told you, if you want to destroy a neighborhood, a family, a country, uh, or anything white, put the blacks in charge. Look what Obama has done to America. Why don't you believe me that blacks are not built to lead or make better? The proof is the walls are just falling down everywhere they go, and you still don't admit what you see. But anyway, they they are trying to keep Claudine at at the school she work at, but the white women got to go, or non-black, whatever color they may be. So something else is going on. And I'm going to tell you again what I believe now. I'm, I'm believing this. They're trying to destroy white people. This thing is not just about destroying the Jews. They want to destroy the whites too. Anything that's white, you got to go. That's the mentality. They want to destroy and rebuild the white world in a in a communist control society and they want to make the western world the same as the rest of the world so that they can control the people 
Now, I could be wrong, but it sure looked like it to me. I was thinking about how when all other races are attacked, quote-unquote, there's a big deal about it, especially if it's Jewish or black or Asian. Well, not really the Asian. They don't care too much about the Asian, but they work with the Asian because they need the Asian to be a part of the colored group. But <clears throat> whenever they attack on anything but white, there's a whole world go nuts. But when there's an attack on white, which has been going on for 35 years or so since I've been aware. Maybe it happened even before that. There's nothing being said. Why don't y'all see that there is a genocide upon white people in the Western world? And why isn't there some discussion about that? Why is it that white lives don't matter? So they're, they're going after the Jews, not just because they're Jews or not just because of the land. It's because they're white. And they said that the Jews are took the land in the same way they were saying that the white people took the land here. And even on Christmas, instead of celebrating Christmas in, in some area, they have these Indians up there talking about their mess. About indentures. Nobody want to hear about no indentures on Christmas. What the? <laughs> this ain't no indentures world uh, country. This is a Christian country. But y'all need to pay attention. It's, it's something more going on than what they're telling you. And somebody, whomever's in charge of setting up all these rallies and all this stuff that's going on, their plan is bigger than what you can imagine because you, you're caught up with what your eye can see. You're not standing on the mountain and looking down and seeing what's really going on. Just think about the number of attacks that have happened to whites. Robbery, rape, breaking to the home, uh, carjacking, knocking them out in the streets. Uh, breaking into their businesses. Nobody care. It's barely reporting on. But any other color, that's all it's being talked about for the next year or so. There was a black woman who had been accused of trying to set fire into Martin Luther King home down in Georgia. How many people heard about it? Had a white person done it, we're going to get to that story. Had a white person been accused with video of the same thing, what do you think would be happening right now? Burn, baby, burn. That would be a a, 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 a race war right now. Y'all need to wake up and see what's going on. You need to be in the world, but not of it. You need to be in the world but not of it because it's going to get worse before it gets better. And the dumb Christians are waiting for the end time. The end time is already here. You're like the Jews waiting for Jesus, and Jesus has already come. The, the Christians are waiting to be taken up. they already been taken up. Well, they haven't, but some have, and they don't know it. It's been done. Y'all need to watch what's going on. This is about changing America by getting rid of the whites because they know people of color are okay with socialism. They're just fine with socialism. Give me my free stuff. Thank you. Y'all better, this is evil what's happening. And if you don't love all, you love none. This is why Christ said, love even your enemies. Y'all need to watch what's going on. This is not just about the Jews. This is about getting rid of white people. Look what happened in South Africa. When South Africa was a, an apartheid nation, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I know that blacks were living, some blacks were living out of little huts, 
That's because the blacks didn't rebuild the huts. It wasn't the white man's fault. And now the white man had been on attack over there, and they've given up the, the cities of South Africa and gone back to the farmland. The black people are going out there in the same way they're doing in this country. They're going to the suburbs and, and ripping off the whites. This is a battle for the white people, and that's not good. If you don't love all, you love none. Look what a tough time the blacks are having. Not all, not all, not all, but most. Black people don't love anyone. They don't love God. They don't love Jesus. They don't love themselves. They love no one. They hate the white man, so they hate everybody. And look what's happening to them. Nearly every day you hear about uh, air traffic control problems where planes are about to smash into one another or something going on with them. They put the blacks in charge of the air, air traffic controller towel, and they was not qualified. They were affirmative action babies. Baby, come down that, look, come on the left side. <laughs> I don't see nothing over there. White people, fear not, God is with you. Why not just take back your country by voting out these people and changing the laws back to normal and have strong police force? Why not just do the right thing and not be afraid? Because look what's happening as a result of having fear. Anyway, I, I'm just saying, they want to keep the little clotting gay woman. She's black. But they're letting the white women go or forcing them in some kind of way to resign. Why? If all of them was wrong, if all of them said the same thing about the situation with the Jews, why not make them all go if you got to make the white women go? Hell no, we won't go. Y'all better wake up within yourself so you can see what's going on outside of you. I'm just saying, do what you want. You have to nick, and I see, the world. You have to nick, and I see, the world. Or you are gonna, you're in trouble. You think you have worries now. Another thing, what's happening to men today by their mothers and people who are encouraging mothers to destroy their sons is pure evil. And I've told you over and over again, a mother's love is evil. There's nothing good about a mother's love because mothers and women do not have love. Love comes from above. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children. That that's coming through the woman is coming up from below because Satan is the woman's God. That is hate. That's not love. It's a spiritual battle. And the, the, the woman is the gates of hell. Hell come through the woman. And they say, well, men got hell. Yes, they do. Men have it too, but it's the nature of the, that came through the mother. And it's not the woman's nature herself, but it will pass down through Eve because she gave into the serpent, and the serpent became the woman's God. And these mothers who are trying to make their children, their sons, their husbands, their boyfriends, that is wicked. That wasn't going on when I was growing up. That is, t at 18, the boys were out, gone, bye. Where are we going? We don't know, and we don't care. We showed you how to work. We showed you how to pay your bills. Now go and live your life. Deal with the issues of life and grow up. These mother, a mother's love is perverted. It's a fake love. It's a sexual thing. There's something from Amazon.com. For every mom who need to connect with their son, but worry they may be getting older and not interested in spending time with you, that alone is gross. It's evil. Who write like that about your son? Who write like that about your son? 
any son that go, uh, grown son that goes shopping with mama, that's your wife. For every mom who needs to connect with their son, but worry they may be getting older and not interested in spending time with mama. Who want to spend time with their mom? <laughs> What kind of man want to hang out with mama? What the? Do you touch her while you're hanging out? But anyway, spending time with you. The Mother's Sir Journal help every mom and son enjoy a fun way to build a closer relationship. This is evil, folks. This ain't love. This ain't normal. This is not the way it was in the good old days when men were in charge. A mother's love is evil. Look, look at that. We just showed you a picture of that. This is from Amazon.com. Watch this. You and your son. Think about that alone. Where your husband, woman? The man that made the son. <laughs> you and your son can open up to each other. What? How you going to open up? Mama, I love you. Mama, I miss you. Mama, I have a girlfriend now, but I love you more. What the? <laughs> Mama, you can come live with me and my wife. There is a, I, I saw this report this morning where some football team won the game last night, I guess. And it, I guess the top player on the game that won still lived with his mama. He lived near the mama. He lived with the mama. And the mama tell him to stay at home. He's 25, I think they say. I may be wrong. Stay at home and save your money. He's a football player. He's making buku money. <laughs> <laughs> but mama done told him, according to the report, to stay at home with mama. And he's still living at home. That's evil. But anyway, Amazon.com. You and your son can open up to each other and explore feelings through activities. Play for in act play for in activities. Play for interactive list and letters back and forth. Invite both mom and son to think and write about topics. For their past and future. What the? You talking about writing to your girlfriend? Watch this from Imagine Our Life. And I wanted to show you something I got in the mail to share with Jax. I want to keep him writing over the summer. I'll show you a little bit, but it's going to be a lot of fun passing this back and forth. Jax is really, really excited and I hope that he stays excited because I'm going to be writing in it too. Um, he really loves to do things with me and I love that. I love that he still does want to do things to, with me and, he, and I think it will help him wanting to complete it. So right before bed, I just filled up my portion of the beginning page. I printed out a picture of us and I also filled out just my basic info. This is the picture that I put up. I love this one. It's from just our recent trip to the beach. We were at a park and I stopped for some selfies with my babe. Wow. This is why boys become transgenders. That's evil right there. That's nothing to be proud of. That is not love. It ain't cute. It ain't natural. It should not be happening. This is why fathers need to be there to stand between the, s the mother and the sons and daughter become mother and recreate the daughters too, but they're a little more serious about the sons, but they recreate the daughters too. But this ain't normal. Fathers, you're supposed to be standing between your children so that this evil female cannot do that to the sons and daughters. Where's the father? And these women have a habit of 
making it sound so romantic, so loving, when it's pure evil. That's evil. That's evil. I'm trying to reflect on when I was growing up. My my grandmother had, let me see, how many sons? Uh, Uncle W.C., Uncle Libra, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle John, uh, Uncle Buddha Boy. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead now. What the? Four boys and, let me see, Da, Uda. Look, the base here. And four girls, I guess, weren't you? I don't ever remember my uncles went all under my grandmama like that. Or write love letters and all that mess. Man, don't let these women do that to your children. This is not good. And how would the man go out and survive the world as an adult when he's already been destroyed in the home by evil mothers? And women, stop doing this. This is evil. That's not love. And don't let the world praise you and talk about how much you have love. That ain't love. And you wonder why the guys are so weak now and the world falling apart. And the first thing the woman would say, well, if the man was strong, we wouldn't have to do it. You don't want to mess them up. They never had a chance. And guys, don't let your mama tell you you got to stay home at, and save money. That's a setup. Life is not about just saving money. Life is about dealing with the issues and maturing. God has instilled in all human beings a thing that develops that when you're out there challenging and, I mean, dealing with the challenges of the world, there is something in you that will grow. And yes, you should say 10% to invest and have a life to live on the earth. But life is not just about saving money with mama. That's a setup for mama. My grandmother, she didn't she say like, you know what, punching? You need to be saving money so 18 you're gone. She ain't mentioned saving no money. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even say how I was going to get my ticket to get out of Alabama. <laughs> she just said, you're out of here at 18. We're preparing you. She didn't even say we were preparing you, but they taught me to work and be responsible, and they're out of here. She didn't say, save some money so you can buy a flight ticket out of here or a bus ticket. My country's gone, and these women are, are deliberately destroying the boys and the girls in the home when they are children, and the world call it love. Oh, look at that mother. She loves her baby. No, she don't. She doesn't. She hates the baby. If you don't love the baby, don't have the baby. Don't make the baby. Don't abort the baby, but don't make the baby. And you wonder why the men are so weak today. Men, you must return to the Father. And ladies, too. 888-775-3773. Jesse. It's a spiritual battle, folks. You better get on that street. You all have to, a narrow path, so you can overcome the world. And you can. You really can. And you have no fear. I'll be back in a moment. You can't run from evil within yourself or outside of self. You got to deal with it. And you need good in order to deal with evil. And God is good. You need to return to the Father. 
and you'll see within you, he will fight the battle for you. And he will fight it without because he will show you how to deal with it. And you will have no fear. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, along with nothing else. Nothing else means yourself, your children, your wife, your things, your ego, your reputation, and all that. You can't care about any of that. The children of anger will use it to control you. But if you love God, he will renew your mind, and none of those things will be before him. And so when they go after you, oh, well, you may take my body, you may take my things, but you're not going to take my soul. And that's a true reality. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock, jingle bell round the clock. Jingle bell time is a swell time to go up in one horse sleigh. Merry Christmas. Welcome back. 888-775-3773. Follow us on social media. Y'all know what to do. Like, follow, subscribe, and all that. I do appreciate it. I have with me a guest for a few minutes here, and I'll get to your calls and your super chats. Do we have the guest? Um, make sure you, while they're getting the guest for me here, make sure you, uh, uh, this is the end of the year, and a lot of people donate to nonprofit. We have helped you, so help us to continue to help others. All right, go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-BOND to make your donation. It's a 503C1. I have with me a very interesting guest, Dr. Frieder Birnbaum. She is a research psychi- uh, psychiatrist, psychoanalytic therapist, and seasoned media commentator and author, Dr. Byron Berm. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's Burn Bomb, but I know it's oh. hard to pronounce, but that's okay. <laughs> Burn Bomb. So Close I'm, enough. So it's okay to call you Dr. Frieda says I that's an easier name. That's what everybody prefers, Dr. Frieda. Oh, yes. okay. Thank you. And Merry Christmas to you. Same to you and your family. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I appreciate it. So what is a psycho analytist? What is that? So psychoanalytic therapist is somebody who treats the individual. Uh, it's different than psychologist who treats the individual t- uh, developmentally. So when somebody comes into my office, I have to know where they are, what stage of life that they want to be in. And where they need to go, not according to any rules, but according to who they are. And so, so when they come into your office with that kind of problem, how do you help them? What do you tell them? What happens? Wow, that's a load of question. I've been <laughs> in this business. Are you kidding me? If I could have a prescription, say here. By the way, I'm not a psychiatrist. I do research psychology. Because people always get hooked on my titles and whether they're right or wrong. But I don't really care. I'm me. I'm I'm Frida, who I that's who I am. But what do I tell them what to do? Yes. You know, everybody comes in with a different uh 
concern. You well, know? let's do this before this happens yeah. to make it a little easier. Everybody and their mama are depressed today. They have fear. They have anxiety. So if a person comes into your office that has anxiety and fear and worry, what would you do to help them? You know, we need a reality check because we are re really living our lives from day to day. And yes, we've become global, so global that it's interfering with our country that's supposed to be a country of freedom, uh, of uh, free speech, uh, of security. It's really uh, unraveling. Uh, and we are becoming more uh, similar, I hate to say this, uh, like the countries uh, that we're protecting. Uh, we have people that are terrorists, uh, you know, we have people that are killing, shooting children in school. Uh, there is so much chaos going on in our country. We really need to look and see how to fix that before we go out and fix other people. I'm not saying we shouldn't, and I'm not saying that it's a, a good deed to do that, and you believe in God, and I and I believe in a higher being, and we need to be humans uh, and humanistic in our quality, but we have to save ourselves, and we have to save each other, yeah. because we all basically want the same thing, and everyone should have freedom. That's our entitlement. I agree. You know, marriage is, is difficult for men to find good women to marry today because the average woman now is on such an ego trip. She doesn't want to obey her husband. And so ah. it, it's just a waste of time to marry a woman that won't obey you. You already know it's trouble. What are some of the most common problems you find in marriage today? Women don't want to obey their husbands. Right. You know, you can't have everything. Times have changed. Women are in the workforce. Uh, their expectations have become similar, although women are the ones who leave the men more than the vi vice versa in a marriage. And men, don't shake your head, that's true. And right, men are happening. happier. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's not a good thing for no. the men, but men are happier being married because they get all these services. They get a, a wife, they get a woman who's going to be the mother, they get a housekeeper, they get a cook a confidant, uh, somebody who earns money, maybe as much as them or more. So it's a win-win situation. Women often feel compromised because they want the female role and they want to have a career and a status for themselves or go out there in the workforce as well. So it's harder. So women are really are happier when they are not married Although they lack in companionship and they do look for that, men are happier being married and they live longer because they're healthier. They eat better, they exercise, they're more productive, by the way, for their families. They feel a responsibility. So it's all good stuff. So we're getting to a place now in our lives. You know, what are the roles of women and men? Well, we need to define femininity. Women are the feminine ones, even if they're working. Men are the ones that should be the masculine ones. Right. You, where you're looking at me, is, it's a good thing I have some confidence because you're going, what is she talking about? Let uh, me just understand, I'm black and slow, so I... I, I oh, that's right, and I'm white and slower. How's that? <laughs> so are you saying that it's a good thing that men stay home and be the woman and let the woman go out and work? Absolutely not. Oh, you're very slow. Okay, let me repeat that. <laughs> then, I, then I am talking too fast. No, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying the opposite, actually. I'm oh, going to say it slowly. Nice. Men need to have their masculinity intact, Yeah. which means they there is a fine line between having feminine qualities and being out there in the workforce and having a relationship where the man has a masculine role as well. That's what brings men and women together. There is a sharing and giving uh, to each other. And that's extremely important. And when you have that in a marriage, uh, the marriage is better than ever anything because you have something much more uh, that, than what you had before. So yes. absolutely, uh, I don't want to uh, you know, misconstrue 
uh, what I'm saying. I'm just saying that with changing times, even though women have become more assertive, there's a difference between being more assertive and more masculine. The femininity should be there because that's our sexual karma with each other. Yes. Um, do you agree with me that men were men were created to lead and women were created to follow? Ah, that depends on what that means, lead and follow. I think that uh, men, uh, how many centuries ago, went out there and caught the, uh, the, the food and, you know, hunted, and the women stayed home and cooked and got prepared and waited. Uh, so that was a role that was defined and a necessary role. Uh, men today uh, are being uh, demasculated, in, in a word, because they have done nothing wrong. They're pretty much status quo, and I feel they've always been victimized lately. But women are the ones who have changed. So it doesn't mean that the men need to change. Uh, to have a role playing in a family is very healthy, because the children could see can see also uh, that you know, their father is uh, somebody that is respected. Uh, their mother is somebody who is kind and has her role. And it makes it easier, for sure, to have definitions of roles. But the definitions of roles are changing today, where uh, women who want to have everything are uh, seeing that they're having too much. And that definition is that men are actually becoming more nurturers. Which means they are, they, they are helping with the children. And guess who makes the biggest difference in a relationship as far as the children growing up? The men or the women? The man is supposed to make the biggest difference. But if he's nurturing, he's not going to make a difference for the good. It would be for the evil. The evil yeah. has means extreme. I'm not saying the man should stay home. And the woman should go to work. I'm saying that when a man comes home from work, he should be a part of the relationship with the children. And by the way, men love that. They want that anyway. When you say but be it's a becoming part of, more. When you say be a part of, part of in what way? Uh, being a father. But he should uh, find out, you know, like, how did your day go, children? Did your mother impose a will on you? Was she patient? Did she deal with you the right way so that he could correct the mother to make sure that she doesn't impose a will on the children and recreate the children in her image. To reassess what's going on in the home, yeah. for the children to have another voice and to be heard, is a wonderful opportunity to have both parents. That's why it's good if there are both parents and a family, because then the father can come in and say what happened, and the child can say so-and-so, and he can straighten it out. Uh, when there's that's uh, right. so that's a, that's a good a role to play back and forth. You know, when dad comes home, I'm going to tell him what happened. I want to hear his perspective. So he's involved as well. Nice. Yeah, but that's a ask, very nice place to be. So do you agree with me that men were created to lead and women were created to follow? Uh, men were created to lead. Women were created to leave, lead in their own path, in their own way, uh, which is being a wonderful mother to the children, um, having uh, a lot of uh, authority over the day when the husband is not home, and then sharing that and the husband to take over to see what's going on, if know, there is me, any conflict. Let me restate the question. Do you agree with me that men were created to lead and women were created to follow? Do you believe that? No, no, I'm asking you. What do you believe? Do you agree? <laughs> were women created to follow and men were created to lead? And women were created to follow who? Follow the man. If the relationship is a compatible relationship, and that starts from the very beginning, if you both have a spirituality. No, but I'm still asking, do you agree with me that the man were created to lead and the woman was created to follow? I better say yes, or you're going to throw me off the show. No, I feel. no, no, no. I'm going to keep you here. I just want to know what you, what you, how you see that. Were women create, 
created, men created to lead and women created to follow? Not all the time, but yes, it's a wonderful place to be in when you can depend on each other that way. When you know you have somebody that's going to back you up and going to be there for you. Because if a man leads, he's leading the woman the way what's best for the woman. And when that happens, the woman's very fortunate yeah. because then she's in the right relationship because she has somebody that has her back. That's so right. absolutely, if you, everybody could have that. That would be wonderful. It would be in paradise on earth. Are yes, you, it would. Are you a Christian? I am Jewish of faith. You're Jewish? Yes. Oh, I love Jews. Thank you. Thank God. I'm so happy because not ever, because I just broke into my phone. Because right now, be, saying I'm Jewish is like taking a big risk. I don't know what that means today. <laughs> because, you know, I think anti-Semitism, <laughs> I'm going to say something that probably is not funny, but it's taking the place of African-American people being targeted. Maybe we ta maybe we take turns. I don't know what it is. But, uh, but I, I uh, think, yeah. I think that, as I said in my introduction earlier this morning, is that there's more going on to this thing with the Jews and in Palestine and all this mess happening right now. It's, and I think that we need to pay attention because the real attack is upon white people and Jews because there's a genocide happening to white people that's been going on for years, and nobody talk about it. No one cares. No. But if it happened to blacks or Jews or Mexicans or Asians, it's a big deal when white people have been on attack for years in their own countries. Do you agree with me on that? Well, I do agree. And, you know, uh, we're considered minorities are, are really, uh, percentage-wise, there's more of us. Uh, than the white uh, Anglo-Saxon male, whatever they, whatever they claim the status to be, and uh, that's where our country is going. Yeah. And so we have to represent our country appropriately. And when some of the people in our Congress, in our Senate, uh, do not uh, represent, they're not going to be. You know, eventually things are going to change. We need people to represent us. When and I we mean, don't have that. That's why we need Donald Trump back. We need the great white hope back. I love that guy. Yeah, me I love too. that guy. He's we gotta, wonderful. We got to have him back. Listen, is it a, you know, I had a patient who walked out on me because he said to me, if we have Trump, we'll have a war. No, we don't have Trump. And that's why we're having a war. That's it's the right. opposite. Absolutely. Of what people think. Uh, He's, he is somebody who, you know, takes that bully and gives it back double. Yeah. Uh, we are in a country right now where we're so submissive, so passive, so weak. A president who really, I don't know if he's on the verge of being in an old age home. <laughs> he's stepping in there. <laughs> you know, maybe that's where he belongs. He'll be more comfortable. I I'm not saying anything against him personally. I know the no, Democrats need, voted him in. We, that's right. The Democrats are a mess. They're always right. You know, what about the scandal with him and his son? Where is the media? Where are they talking? I don't even hear about this. But with Trump and his overestimating his buildings, that's the big that's the big deal. You know, the Democrats are always in charge and they take over. Yeah. They create the media, the scandal. But the reality is the biggest crooks, the biggest crooks are the Democrats. Biden's family as the biggest corrupt family in the presidential office of all time history. Let me Let's ask, face it. Let me ask because of time, and I do agree with you, we need the great white hope. We need Donald Trump back. If yeah. ever we need a Donald Trump, we need him now. Desperately. Now. But let me ask, ask, um, I tell men to never marry an educated woman because educated women do not make for good wives and good mothers. Am I wrong? Wow, you're amazing because I'll tell you, you're talking to somebody who's done years and years of uh, research on this. And uh, it's interesting because men <laughs> who uh, have, I'm laughing because I'm like, men uh, actually who have women who have high status careers actually uh, have more of a, a common denominator as far as um, 
financial say, social say, uh, parental say, there's more equality. Now, I understand what you feel, and the Bible did say, you're right, uh, that the, the, the division of roles are good. Look, I'm Jewish, and I'll tell you, the Orthodox religion says that role division is important. The woman has her place, the man has his place, and that's why it works so well, because nobody questions anything. And because they each have that place, the coming up together makes the whole. I understand that. It's a very convenient time. My mother's time was much easier because of yeah. that. Yes. Because that's the life she lived. So you, and they uh, came, yeah. You're married, right? I've been married a long time to one person. And do you obey your husband? Um, I do want to make him happy. Do you obey him? Uh, well, you, when you say obey, it's like taking the whip and going like that. No. <laughs> Why would you think of it that way? <laughs> because what the? It, the obey, you know, is a very, very, um, what is that word? Uh, it's something that is, uh, there's no leeway. I think getting along but as far... in your mind. That's not what obey means. To... Maybe it's my mind that's messed up, but I'll tell you, you the got... truth. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. You need we to are on the same page. I know what makes him happy. Let's put it that way. And I want to make him happy. Do you so obey I will... him? So if that's the word, okay. So I, in the morning, I'll make him coffee. If I'm around, I'll make him breakfast. I'll, I'll... And if he's happy... I'm happy. It makes gives me energy. So that's been my orientation from my background, the way my mother treated my father. Yeah. She was there for him. Yeah. She did what he wanted to. And because of it, they were compatible because he wanted to do for her. You know, you do something for somebody, they want to give back double. Absolutely. And that's the way it is back and forth. Yes. So I, because of time, and it's amazing how fast it's gone by, is it true that you had twin babies at 66, 67 or something? I was 60. That's old enough. <laughs> Don't you, make it worse. <laughs> and you had twin children. I had one set of twins. And what made you At de- 60. And what made you decide to get, you, uh, is your name Sarah? What made you, and your husband named Abraham, what no. made you get pregnant at 60? It's funny that every, I got all these interviews, no one asked my husband, but he's the one that wanted to do it. He said I looked younger than my age. The boys are 16 years old now, by nice. the way. Nice. Yeah, so, and I'm so old already, but I don't feel old. I feel like I'm the same person. I wear my hair the same, I I do the same things, I wear the same, I'm the same person, the same energy, we're living longer. I wasn't supportive so of it. He said, just don't tell the truth. (laughs) Then the world found out and everybody knows what's the difference. And how did you feel when the world found out that at 60, you had twins? I feel, you know, I had a man from Germany come and ring my doorbell and I opened the door and he says, where's the old lady? And I said, I guess I'm the old lady, (laughs) but you know, you know, I guess that's me. But I think the world misrepresents what age is today. Women need to tell the truth about their age yeah. so society can catch up uh, to where we really are uh, Dr. today. Dr. Frieda, let me take a quick break. When I come back, I want you to give out your information and people get in contact. Okay. All right. Quick break, folks. Back in a moment. 888-775-3773. Now, I totally disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. And the woman's gonna have to say, you don't wanna be angry. You wanna speak up, you wanna disagree with what's going on, it's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear, you won't have doubt, you won't have worries, you'll be able to see. But you gotta stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love, bro. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature.
A whole lot of mess going on in the world. This is the end of hour one of the J.S. Lee Peterson Show. It is Tuesday, December 12th, 2023 A.D. Stay tuned for hour two. JLP will be right back to mo- to the great guests and your calls. The lines are full, guys. But first, fake news, not fake news. Google's top searches of 2023 every year. Kami Nonsense Network reports. Uh, Google releases a list of users' most searched terms. The top trending term in the United States and globally, if you believe in the globe, which I do, in 2023 was war in Israel and Gaza. The tech giant announced that on Monday. Other leading topics included NFL player Damar Hamlin, the one who had the heart attack on the field, I think, and also the Barbie and Oppenheimer movies. And, of course, the late actor Matthew Perry from that degenerate uh, Friends TV show from 20-some years ago. Uh, That woman left Texas to kill her child. Commie Nonsense Network CNN and the far-left female-run outlet The Skim both report that Kate Cox left Texas to get an abortion. The woman at the center of one of the uh, biggest challenges to the state's abortion law since Roe v. Wade. Last week, a lower court overruled Texas law, which bars abortion at six weeks to grant Kate Cox, the 31-year-old mother of two, an exception for the procedure. That's because Kate Cox, 20 weeks pregnant, now probably 21 weeks pregnant, has a fetus with a fatal chromosomal condition and a pregnancy as with that pregnancy, as with life itself, poses a threat to her health. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, a Republican, is he Republican or Republicant? He appealed the case to the Texas Supreme Court, state Supreme Court, which then blocked her abortion in the state. Yesterday, Kate Cox's attorney said she left Texas to get the procedure, calling the past week hellish. Hellish. It's not good for your body to be uh, uh, disturbed like that. The Texas state Supreme Court weighed in yesterday, official ruling, ruling against Kate Cox, saying her doctor didn't assert that she had a life-threatening physical condition and that the lower court's ruling was a mistake. However, it's not the ab- only abortion case for one of the country's most populous states in Texas. The conservative-leaning court also hearing another legal challenge to looking to clarify what's considered a medical exception to the state's abortion laws. Before Texas restrictions took Effect, the state recorded about 50,000 abortion procedures per year. In the first nine months of 2023, there have reportedly been just 34. Cox's case highlights the legal hoops that women have to jump through in states where abortion is restricted. Now, Texas's latest decision points to how narrow the exceptions in the state's law for, actually are for many even if the procedure could mean saving their lives or fertility, so claim the ladies at the skim. What a mess. Uh, Nearly one in five people seeking an abortion, says CNN, pregnant females they mean, traveled out of state uh, uh, since Roe v. Wade was overturned in 2022. Hamas hostages, so-called president, sleepy Joe Biden, corrupt, crooked Joe Biden, pledged unshakable support for Israel, and hailed his administration's efforts to secure the release of hostages held in Gaza by Hamas. We've gotten more than 100 hostages out, and we're not going to stop till we get every one of them home, said Sleepy Joe at a menorah lighting ceremony at the White House, the black on the inside White House, dark, evil. The reception celebrated the fifth night of Hanukkah, and it featured about 800 guests, including Holocaust survivors, lawmakers, and Jewish leaders, they call them. Several family members of U.S. citizens believed to have been taken hostage by Hamas have asked to attend but never received invitations. Meanwhile, the evil U.N. General Assembly will resume its emergency section in Gaza days after the U.S. vetoed a Security Council resolution calling for a ceasefire. So we'll see what happens. Uh, some The Washington Compost released an analysis accusing Israel of using white phosphorus in uh, Lebanon, southern Lebanon and Oklahoma, which can really burn people, including civilians. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP, Hour 2. Got 
Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773-888-77. Jesse, um, don't forget the... Um, we have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about, you can podcast the show, but you could be listening live on your iPhone or iPad, no matter where you are or what you're doing, by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500, 641 641-793- one five zero zero. Follow us on social media. Y'all know what to do with that, right? Also, to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk or rebuildingtheman.com. It's Tuesday. It's the second hour of the show already. It is Country and Western Tuesday. Oh, my where they all been lies They let me down every single time Because the devil's been making homes Inside my head The good, the bad, the glad, the sad If I could let them all go and give them to God Well maybe you take this anger from my soul and I'd shine like a light that's too bright to see And I could lean on God so He could lean on me Forgive, forgiveness, righteous, perfect peace oh, Amazing! Oh, amazing! You gotta overcome anger. Anger is evil. And anyone that has anger cannot be trusted. You are a murderer. You must have love. I'm talking with Dr. Frida, and she is a research psychologist, psycho, psychoanalytic therapist, seasoned media commentator, and author. Dr. Frida, thank you for, and tell the folks your last name. Pronounce your last name. That's a difficult name. It's supposed to mean pear tree in German. Burn bomb. Okay. Burn, Amazing. Bomb, whatever. And so, Frida is my name. You can call me anything you want. I'll answer it accordingly. I mean, if it's not too bad, there you I'll go. answer. I have, uh, in, in winding this up, I um, we mentioned that at 60, you and your husband decided that you're going to have some more children, and you had twins, and they're now teenagers. What, what, how has it been for you raising kids that so. I don't even want to call it late in life, but at that age, how it was, was late it? in life? Actually, it was much easier. You know, when you have your first child, everything has to be sterile and don't talk and don't look around over there and, and a smile and, you know, you get hyper crazy. And then by the time you're older, uh, you already know yourself, you're settled with your career. Um, I started much younger. I didn't start at 60. I ended up delivering. I think the word, the number six, I had a nerve with people. If it was 59, maybe 56, it would be different. But I did start in my 50s and my middle 50s uh, because uh, I felt that uh, I could really make a difference to my other child who was a uh, couple years old. I had another child older. And so I did that. But... The reality is, it's not about having children. It's about being yourself at any age and having a path 
that when you become something different, to acknowledge that path and change that path, whether it's a career, a relationship, uh, it's a self-identity, whatever that is that you want to do, uh, there should be no stopping you. I, I had people calling me women from Africa, Dubai, you name it, around the world. And it's not because of that what I did, but they met, they felt better. They felt that they had a second chance in life to make changes and do what it is that they want to do. So we really shouldn't have society dictate who we are. I mean, my whole life I've had a stigma. I went back to school when most women said, what are you bothering for after I had my children? I was waiting to do that. Uh, I supported and protected my parents who were Holocaust survivors and you name it. And, you know, when you're uh, racially targeted, it's much harder. Uh, but with uh, with me, my parents uh, did wear who they were, uh, so to speak, on their skin. My mother uh, was uh, a European short Jewish immigrant with a heavy accent. And people would laugh at my parents. And one time I was in the car, sitting in the car, and some teenagers walked by. I don't know how they saw my parents. They saw them <laughs> sitting in the car, and they started laughing. I got out with a fervor, and I ran after them. Now, they could have knifed me easily, you know. They didn't. They came back, and they apologized. Let me ask I was going to kill them. What? Uh, let me ask this because of time here. Um, I asked you if you, somehow or another, I asked you if you believe in God or something, or Christian. You said you believe in how power. Who is that how power you believe in? I believe, you know, in the word God, there is, a, there is something up there. There has to be. I lost a child at the age of 22, and I can guarantee you that there is something there that keeps coming back and on a, a conscious level. And I know that in our religion, that when you pray to God, uh, there's something there that comes back uh, to reward you. And I've always had that. And I come from a religious family. So my parents observed the Sabbath every Saturday. And they didn't drive. They didn't do any work, which is actually a good thing. We need a break from all that stuff. Uh, so, yes. Why do you they call them a power, power rather than God? Well, I'm trying to appeal to our people. You know, it's all the same. We're all humanity, and there's a higher being, God or uh, something spiritual, uh, whatever word they use. I use God because that's what I was brought up with, and that's what I see, that there is a God. And when I confirm that there is a God, I don't know if it's a miracle, I get back. I always get back. When I pray to God, I get back. Nice. I'm very fortunate. Yeah. And I used to send money to my parents every week, and I'd find money in my pocket. I'd find it. I was whenever I give, I get back. So yes, I'm very blessed that there is a God that He's there for us. And when you pray to God, you get the answers. You definitely do. Do you have anger? I do not have anger because I uh, address my feelings. Anger is repressed feelings that burst out. And as long as you can articulate what you're feeling, then you're giving the other person a viewpoint without feeling that you're not identifying yourself appropriately. And you don't have to do it with anger. You could do it with kindness. Uh, it's how it's not what you say, but it's how you say it that can really affect another person. Nobody wants to be attacked. They're going to put a wall up. They're not going to hear you anyway. So the best thing to do really is when at the moment it happens, because later what happens if you don't express it at the moment, it comes out in another way and you target off in the person that's closest to you because you have to you have to get it out. And you're angry at the wrong person. Let's say somebody comes home from work and somebody said something. You come home to your spouse and you let it out on your spouse. So you really have to identify it. The closer you can identify your feelings to your behavior, the more evolved you can get to getting your needs met. What's wrong with the blacks? I think black people, uh, you know, are very, very much targeted. What and do you mean? I think In what way? I, I think that they're often misrepresented. Now, I did a show with Al Corlin 
about discrimination, about 2.3 listeners, 2, 2 million and a half listeners. Uh, the Al, Al Corlin show with Dr. Frida. And all we did discuss was discrimination. And what I did, I had young black men come on who were extremely accomplished, politicians, professionals, I mean, you name it, uh, to represent the black community. Because the news only hears when something happened. Either they did something or that they were targeted. But what about celebrating accomplishments? Just like the media uh, goes ahead and denounces everything that Trump does, the media seems to have a tendency toward targeting African-American males, especially. And once we get away from that, we need men that are African-American in politics, we need them in the media. But we need them all over them, to be part of our society. Excuse what's me? wrong with the blacks, though? The blacks are, are screwed up. Not all, but most. What's wrong well, with the blacks? It's not the blacks, but it's their uh, socioeconomic community. What do you mean? If you take a person and you put them in a middle class community, they assimilate to that environment. If you take a person, and I don't care what color they are, and you put them in an underprivileged community where the mother's working double time and uh, there's no money and they have to go out and, and, and steal a loaf of bread or something, <laughs> or the only support system they have is the gang because they are heard, uh, then you grow up in a certain underprivileged way. Let's face it, white communities, we have tutors, uh, all kinds of after-school activities, that keeps kids out of trouble. When, especially teenagers, they love challenges. Uh, the uh, cortical frontex of the brain, uh, frontal cortex of the brain is still developing. They love risk and challenges. So when you take that and you teach them tennis lessons or skiing, or when they don't have what to do, so they get together with the gang, that's really what happens. It's not the race, per se. It's the environment. Let me and ask, we need to stay, uh, change that structure let me is what ask, we need to do. If the blacks were to do it right, and when they decide they want a family, if they got married and the father and the mother raised their children together, taught them by example how to be decent people and be of love and not hate and how to provide for themselves, would the blacks be having the same kind of problems that they're having now? Absolutely not. So why don't people tell the blacks to stop whining, to stop blaming, to stop blaming white folks and, and slavery and Jim Crow and, and begging for reparations and affirmative action and tell them to get back on board and do it the right way by getting married and taking care of themselves? Why don't people suggest that over anything else? You know, being a victim never helps. Right, but so why don't they uh, you know, tell them that? Because the, the victimization is do for me. Uh, and that you, you're going to be a victim the rest of your life. You know, education, a hard work, determination, uh, that's what makes it in this world. But why and, don't they tell the blacks that rather than blaming it on the media, blaming it on white people? Because white people have nothing to do with the problem with blacks today or any other time, to be honest. Well, a show, like my, a show like what I had that represents black uh, men, young men, who are actually in this world making a difference, being productive, working hard, getting educated, as I said, needs to be represented. Yes, and I agree with you. People need to get up there. Uh, my parents came in, they were illiterate, they were Jewish, they didn't speak a language, they did nothing. And I came and uh, I don't even know if they believed in education, but I saw I saw that uh, that's the direction I needed to go into. So, and so I didn't have to, as you said. Why not tell the blacks the same thing? Don't let them have any excuse but to take responsibility for themselves. If you're talking about leadership roles. No, I'm talking about parents. If you're talking about leadership roles, parents have to be able to raise children to be leaders. That's what happens. Now, parents often do not have the background, you know, uh, different chains of, chains of generational events keep reoccurring. So sometimes the parents don't have the ability, but 
The community should have centers, should have policemen who befriend these kids so they don't see them as the en enemy, should have all kinds of activities to promote children for education and success. That's what these communities need, but after school activities, so they don't join gangs because those are the ones who will listen to them and that those are the ones that will be their support system. But um, if the black parents didn't tell, give their children the talk by telling their children, oh, when you go out in the streets, you have to be careful because you're black and the cops are going to hurt you. The cops are your enemy. The cops this. If the parents didn't brainwash their children with those lies, and when the kids go out, they wouldn't act crazy, and the cop would deal with them in the way they deal with everyone. But the yes. parents are setting the children up to act out, and then when they act out and the cop have to do their job, they blame the cops and not the parents for making the children act out. The, parents set, the black parents set their own children up. Parent, black parents don't often have the resources, and I agree with you, of course, that would be the best possibility to parent it's your a, children right to way. parent family appropriately, but you don't often have that. We have to be realistic with what we're starting with. Now, maybe eventually what you're talking about, the next generation will step up to that. But are we at that point? No, with because these the black is whining and blaming generation after generation, and they're getting worse. They are now robbing white people, raping them, breaking into their businesses, burning down their businesses, going out into the white communities and stealing and killing. When I was growing up, I grew up on a plantation down in Alabama, sweet home Alabama. And I grew up under the Jim Crow laws, and my parents worked the plantation, their parents and their parents. Wow. And it was beautiful. It was no violence. They didn't need a community to raise the children. The parents raised the children. The blacks and whites treated each other the way they would like to be treated. And they worked, and blacks were, the blacks were like the Jews. They took care of themselves. And then the civil rights movement happened when it was the worst thing that ever happened to the blacks. The worst thing that ever happened to the blacks other than abortion was the civil rights movement. Because what they did, they followed Martin Luther King and Jesse Jackson and all those people, and they destroyed the family, and they turned their lives over to the civil rights leaders and the Democratic Party, and it's been downhill ever since. And when I was growing up, you didn't hear black people complaining about resources. That doesn't even make sense. I lived in a 10-roof house, bathroom outside, when it rained, you could hear the rain, and it made you sleep like a baby. And I had to work the cotton fields and things. Black people weren't worried about resources. It was about the character. It was about the family. It was about love and not hating. The black people need to yeah. return to that. All that other stuff is a waste of time. Well, you know, the reality about life is what's up here in your brain. And if you have peace of mind, it doesn't matter. If you have a relationship, as you were talking about, man and woman that work, and, and, that work together, and children grow up with that peacefulness and that support system and that security, then yes, you're right. Then you can go out there and fend for yourself. So it starts not only with the parenting, but it starts with the relationship of two people, man and wife, because that's the real role model. Children watch what you do, not what you say. Absolutely. If they can see that that's cohesive, then they don't have to worry about how am I going to get money on the table? They can go ahead and educate themselves. But that's where it starts. See, I grew up with no money, but I had the advantage. My mother and father took care of each other. So they next, were happy with each other. And the role play you're talking about, you're right. It was easy. My mother was home. My father went yeah. to work. It was very simple. I had a very smooth, tranquil lifestyle. I didn't know we didn't have any money. My right. parents didn't argue in front of me. It was a pleasure. Had nothing to do with economics. Nothing. My husband grew up in a, a family where there was a nanny, even when the kids were gone. He had everything, but his parents weren't around. And he didn't have the emotional connection that I had. And that's really what we need. Yeah, so don't be, telling, don't be telling those black people, oh, y'all need education, y'all need this. They need to return to the order of God 
It ain't about they the need education. to return to their nest. Yeah. They need to return to the beginning of what is a comfort level, the the basic emphasis of life. And that is, if you're going to have a peaceful home environment, then you're going to have the ability to go ahead and take care of yourself. So don't, let, your them parents, blame, don't let them blame the police. Don't let them blame the lack of resources. Don't let them blame anyone. It's on them. It's on the individual. You have to go, you know, and I'll tell you, it's a set, a mindset. You could be any kind of race. And if you look at other people and say they have, I want what they have. Well, you have to go out and do what they did to have what they have. That's it's similar right. to the Israelis and the Palestinians. Go out, educate yourself, do what they did. They took us a, a bare desert. And they made it into a beautiful country. Nobody wanted it when they did it. But after they did it, they wanted it. It's the same thing. Go get your own. Go do your own. <laughs> let, me, you know? let me ask you this. I need short answers because of time. Number one, do you believe in the order of God? The order of God. I believe that we are destined to have a certain type of moral event if we have the opportunity Do you believe to be in the, in the order of God. So by the order of God, tell me what you're thinking. So I want to know I'm addressing it right. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children. That works if we allow it, but this country has changed. But do you believe in that? I, it has worked for my parents. So you do believe in it? It has worked for my parents. And do you agree with me that the God above... It's a God of man, and the God below is a God of the woman. I believe in my Bible, in the Jewish Bible, it says, the men pray in the morning, thank God I'm a man. And in a way, when I first heard about it, I was very upset. <laughs> I said, how dare them? I'm a woman. What about me? <laughs> Don't I count? What, what, a, what a bunch of idiots. You know, I was ready to kill them all. I'm never talking to them again. <laughs> uh, you know, and then I realized something. It didn't say, um, you know, thank God I'm not a woman. It didn't say that they don't respect women. If anything, they're taking care of and rescuing and securing a woman's position. So their job will be taking, uh, taking away. When you talk about sexuality and gender as well, that's part of it. For a man to feel that he's manly over a woman attracts him more to that woman. It gives him a connection, and that woman in return feels that but, kind of power or from him. But let me ask, and short answer, of, short yeah. answer, short answer. Uh, do you agree with me that until the woman returns to the father, since so she's born of the— because every human being born of the woman, born into an evil spirit. Do you agree with me that until the woman returns to the father, she's born of the father, that Satan is her god? Is Satan her God if she's not born to the Father? Right. You're difficult. You're tough, I want to tell you. <laughs> well, let me tell you. And I'll tell you one. I've never gotten questions like that ever, and I never will again. But that's good. <laughs> that's you're, you're, you're very unique. Well, let's see. Because in reality, we end up marrying our opposite sex, sex parent. And that parent becomes something like... Uh, the person that we didn't feel we had that kind of authority of. And I'm going to give you a convoluted answer. But a but short when, one because of time. Okay, very short, very short. I believe in a sense of, 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 uh, of uh, a, a pattern to us that we need to establish in order to have male, female, uh, evil is something that is made from men unless you translate it into evil, unless you yourself represent evil. But the evil is not automatic. Evil yep. is not that somebody that has, when you go to true confessions, help me God, I have sinned. Not really. You know, the Jewish religion, that's a short answer, doesn't believe yeah, that. You Let me ask though, um, a yes or no on this. Do you agree that until the woman is born again of the father, that Satan is her God, yes or no? Until the woman is born again, that Satan is her God. Right. 
I'm going to need a lot of your help. I'm going to need a lot of your counseling (laughs) in order to give you the answer you want. Oh, okay. And I'm going to need a lot of therapy from you. Is it true that men marry their mothers? Yes. Right. And it's because they hate their mothers. It's because they want to work through what they couldn't, yeah, but they couldn't work through before. Right. Yeah. And so every right. woman they get involved with is the same spirit and the mother sort of cycle repeats itself. A hundred percent. You better watch out what the relationship is with this man you're involved with, with his mother, because you're going to get it for yeah. sure. <laughs> That's right. You're going to get a double fold. Short answer. Are you being a Jewish woman and all this mess going on right now? Are you afraid for your life? I believe that we need to live our lives accordingly. And life is something that is very precious. And you shouldn't give up what you're doing. Uh, when I go to temple, there are two afraid, police cars no? now. Are you afraid for your life? No. My kids go to school and they're, they're, they're shootings and murders, even in the white suburban areas. We have to live our lives accordingly because if we live in fear, then we're not really true to ourselves. When I was growing up... Uh, I grew up a Christian, and Christians Christians and Jews were tight. Uh, it was understood that Christianity came from Judaism, and as a result, we loved one another. And I grew up always wanting to go to Israel, so I finally oh. had a chance to go to Israel. It was amazing. And I made a decision that if I was God, in order to enter into heaven, if you die or when you die, you will have to have gone to Israel first. Otherwise, he can't get into heaven. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. <laughs> well, you're a very special person. Uh, you're very special because you're very kind. You ask uh, provocative questions, I have to admit, <laughs> but, but very thoughtful questions. And it makes people realize what the truth is. Because we've been in such a place yeah. now that everyone wants to prove themselves. And you're saying, humble yourself, uh, accept authority. And go ahead and take this responsibility that you're setting up to happen to begin with. Your your activities, your events in your lives are in your hands. And everybody that's listening can actually do something about that and make changes right now, no matter where they are. That's very important. And close in here, do you have any questions for me? Wow. Yes. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, What, what? Uh, what what is it that you're asking me that has not worked for you? Is there anything that you're telling me that has not worked? I know I, our battle is a spiritual battle, and, and it's a warfare within each individual between good and evil, and that we must forgive, see that we are wrong for resenting our parents because all children who are born through their mothers, they hate their mothers because she imposed her will upon her on them, boys and girls. And she turned them away from their fathers. And so they must overcome evil by forgiving their mothers. The mothers did the best they could do. And forgive their fathers for not protecting them from the mother and return to the father. And God will forgive them and give them perfect peace, which is love, which is the nature of God. And we can have paradise on earth. We can, wow. end, we can lay our weapons down, no more fighting. Wow, that's so uh, profound. You should tell that to President Trump and he should say that to the world, because if we could follow this, then we wouldn't have fighting. We wouldn't have anger. We wouldn't have resentment. None of what's going on would actually happen. And you're describing every single household that exists because the women are to blame it on the men. And then the children grow up feeling anger. And then the mother is the one that's hostile. So now I understand a little yes. bit what you're talking about, the evil and Satan and women. Now I get it. Nice. Tell the folks how to get to your social media. It's, uh, I, have a, I have a podcast, uh, The Dr. Frida Show, D-O-C-T-O-R-F-R-I-E-D-A Show. And I have a website, uh, Dr. Frida, D-R-F-R-I-E-D-A dot com. That's it, it. It's been amazing meeting you and talking to Love you. Love you. You're amazing. You're the one that's amazing. Amazing. Thank you so um, much. Amen. And go into politics or something. <laughs> more, more people need to know about you. Love you. Thank Love you. Love you too. God bless My you. My pleasure. Love you. Right Thank now. you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Amazing. Back in a moment, folks, to your phone calls and super chats. Back in a moment. We have a counseling service. And I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the 
best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy. They're miserable. They have rough lives. They're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand. I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. Okay, folks, welcome back. Check out the doctor there. And the hate report is coming up at 9 a.m. this morning. Did y'all see hate debate the other night? Go to thehateReport.com slash events. Appearances. Appearances. All right, if you didn't see it yet, you will not regret it. It was deep. ThehateReport.com slash events. Appearances. <laughs> Whatever. And then at 12 noon... Oh, it's Tuesday. At, at 11 a.m. today, uh, Joy of Friday TV, you black. Joy of Friday TV at 12 noon every Tuesday. Check it out. He's, he's not just Arkansas for nothing. <laughs> he black. And at 12 noon, the, the American anchor baby. Fly high on natural energy given to him by God at 12 noon. So a busy day today, all right? I want to go to the phones, 888-7753-773. Marlene out of New York. Marlene, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Cassie. Nice to talk to you. You too. Speak up for me, Marlene. Okay. Um, My phone's all the way up, but can you hear me now? I do. Okay. I really wanted to talk to that Dr. Frieda because uh, I think having children like she did is extremely selfish to be older like that, to have children. Because when I'm 70 now. When my mother and father had me in the 50s, my mother was 43 and my father was 47. And at that time when I, so that was older, you know? back then, and it still is, and for two to three years, when I was like four or five, mostly when I went to kindergarten and first grade, I would cry myself to sleep every night, and my mother would ask me, what's wrong? You know, why are you crying? And I couldn't tell her. I couldn't tell her that because my because her and my father were old at that time, I was afraid they were going to die. And so for two years, I cried myself to sleep. My mother would stay with me, and she'd ask me, why are you crying? And I, and I couldn't tell her that I was afraid that they were going to die because they were so old. And I couldn't, and in school, first grade, second grade, 
I came, my, the nurse brought me home all the time because I was throwing up in school. And that went on for two years. And I wanted to tell that lady that that's a very selfish thing for her and her husband to have kids that late because the, the children, the children know they're old. And, and that's how I felt. So what I wanted to tell her. But because that was a bad situation for you, why would you uh, put that on her? She seemed as though she and her situation is not like that at all. Why would that be bad for her and her kids just because it was bad for you? Well, I, I can't say that all kids would feel like that, but I know how I felt. Right, but that's just they you old. felt that way. That doesn't mean everyone going to feel that way. Well, I still think it's, it's a disservice. I don't even know how she became pregnant. I mean, how does an old woman like that become pregnant without without help from the medical establishment. Does it bother you at all that she had kids at 60? Yeah, well, only because of, like, what I said. So, I think children are very perceptive, so and they have it, a lot of... What? Does it bother you that she had kids, she and her husband had kids at 60? Does that bother you about them? No, I just wanted to let her know as a psychiatrist or a psychologist, whatever she is, I wanted to let her know what having parents, a woman who has children when they're older, is not always is not always good for. It may be good for them, but the children might could be affected by it. But she said her kids, her twins were doing fine. Well, she's lucky. And then she's remember, lucky they didn't have that. You remember Sarah in the Bible? Yeah. She was 99, and Abraham was 100. Remember that? Yeah, I don't believe that. And they, had, the and they had baby. They had a baby. Abraham was 100, Sarah, Sarah was 99. Are you mad at Sarah for having a baby at that age? No, but I don't believe it happened. Why not? Because I believe in the New Testament. I understand the Old Testament. Why you and don't believe stories, that happened? And you know. You know. You don't believe everything that's in the Bible, right? Why don't you believe that happened? Because women have menopause. The it's, men a, it's a oh, physical. <laughs> it's a physical <laughs> impossibility. So I don't believe everything that's in the Bible. Um, you know? but, do you believe in God? Yes, I do. You're a Christian? Yes, I am. Oh. And so why don't do you you don't believe that it's possible for a woman to have a baby at ninety nine? No. But if you believe in God and in God all things are possible, why don't you believe that? Because men wrote those stories. Yes, they were inspired by God or but men wrote those stories and she was ninety. But, Sarah was ninety. Yeah. But well, if you do you believe that all things are possible for those who believe in God? Yes. So yes. then why I don't you believe? I know where you're going. I know all what you're doing here. Where am I going? I, where am I going? <laughs> the men are paused when I walked into the room. <laughs> there were two more things I wanted to address real quick. No, tell me first where I'm going. But all things are possible by God. And, and Sarah you believe- and could have a baby at that age because right. God... Gave it to her. Right. And so you don't believe that it's possible for women today to have children at 90? <laughs> I mean, science is progressing. Maybe they can start putting in artificial wombs and stuff like that. But do you believe that if women were to love God with all their heart, soul, and might, overcome the anger, and their body would be amazing, that they can have babies at 90? Yes. If God wants them to. Right. So it's okay to have a baby at 90. Did you forgive? It's okay, but I'm just telling you, Jesse, what what I went through. And right. That was your experience, life. and I understand. Did you overcome that? I don't. I, I had overcome it. I overcame it when, by the third grade. My parents didn't die, and I, I had a good teacher, and right. so I felt better. But uh, I, I, I just wanted to tell her that... Since she was a, psych- was a psychologist, I wanted her to, to know how one person, me, how I, about my parents being old and having me. 
That's all I wanted to do. Right. I understand that. But don't I, but but don't believe that it's not possible for women to right. have children at ninety and for men yeah, to make babies at a hundred or ninety nine. It's selfish. It's no, selfish. not unless selfish. Woman, How would it be selfish the, if that's what they want? How is that selfishness? Well, if they can leave if they're nine if the woman's ninety years old and the father's ninety five years old and they can and they can leave they can take care of little children and not make them uh scared because they're so old that the kids are going to think they're going to die, then I think, then yes, you know, they should talk to them and tell them, don't, you know, don't did, worry, did, I, I'm not going to die. Did, your I'm not parents, gonna did you, you talk to your parents about your fears about them dying? No, I was afraid. Why? I didn't want to tell them, I didn't talk to my father about it because I was going to sleep at night and I was crying. Why didn't you talk and to so your mother and father was, about it? I was just a little kid, Jesse. I was four or five years old. I, I didn't know. And I, and I was scared to tell my mother that I was afraid she was going to die because I was afraid she was going to die. But maybe if you had talked to them, you would not have been traumatized by that. Yes. I think my mother and my, should have took, got my father and said, she's going to sleep crying, uh, crying every night. Something's wrong. We have to find out what's wrong. Yes. Let's talk to her, you know? D so your and then mother I probably would have felt better. Your, your mother knew you were crying every night, right? Yes. And did you for forgive her for not telling your father? I have. I've forgiven her. She's dead. She but, did. Yeah. <laughs> can can I answer two quick things? Yes. Jesse You you say uh, a lot. What's wrong with the blacks? Yes. Okay? And I know what's wrong with the blacks. What's wrong with the blacks? All they think about is being black. Yeah. That's on the top, you know? <laughs> and they can't write books. They can't think of anything else about unless it's about talking or feeling about being black. Absolutely. And, yes. And white people don't think about being white. Right. And, and so their minds... They could create things and invent things because they weren't stuck in this endless loop of saying, I'm, I'm white, I'm white, I'm white, you know, I need stuff. I ha uh, but black people, all they do is think about, I mean, most of all they do is think about being black. And yep. if, that's all you can, yeah, if that's all you can think about, you cannot move on from that. That's deep. And so when you tell the blacks that, what do they say? <laughs> well, I'm. I say it on sometimes on my on my comments to a different different shows, but I I don't really talk to blacks. I'm. A, you had another question a few weeks ago. What are you afraid of? Yes. I'm afraid of black people. <laughs> Everybody they afraid of me. the blacks. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm <laughs> afraid God, of the blacks. Thank God, thank God, I'm always with my husband, and he carries, <laughs> you know, and we keep our heads on a swivel. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love you, well, and, uh, I love you too. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you this: a friend of mine just sent me something. He says that this is from the Associated Press, December okay. one, twenty twenty three. Uh, a 70-year-old Ugandan woman gave birth to twins after fertility, 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 fertility treatment. She was yeah. 70. Uh, so I, you, I don't like that, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, so, Marie, Mar Mar Marlene, people in the world. Yeah, well. you, you know what I suggest for you, Marlene? What, what Jesse? Go in there, get busy, get pregnant. <laughs> I gotta tell my husband that. <laughs> get busy, get pregnant, and get over the trauma. Sounds <laughs> oh, good. It's good talking to you, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and to everyone there. Thank you. I love you. Love okay. you too. Okay. Bye bye. Bye now. Get busy, Marlene. Make some babies. Tell your husband get busy. 888-7753-773. Chris, a first-time call out of New York. 
Hey, Jesse. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Um, I just had a couple questions for you today. Okay. Um, the biblical question was, uh, what does it mean to go to God in fear and trembling? Yes. But my question is, and I don't know if there's any difference, but what does it mean to fear God, and why would anyone fear God? And I'm, I'm white, and I normally don't hear a lot of white people say that. It's mostly just the blacks that I hear say that. The but blacks! It just, <laughs> but it just doesn't make one iota of sense to me. Well, to fear God is to appreciate Him, to reflect and, and remember how when you were living in hell of anger and your imagination and in fear and doubt and worry and all that, you were living in hell. And you, you found your way out of the hell by returning to him. And so you reflect and you just show appreciation, not even trying to show appreciation, but you're grateful about the hell you've come out of. That's what it means to be, to fear God, to be appreciative. That he brought you okay. out of your misery. Okay, that's amazing, man. Oh, amazing. And um, one other question I had was, um, is there such thing as mental health issues or anything along those lines, or is it just that the individual is possessed? No, there's no such thing as mental health issues. There's a spiritual issue, psychological, spiritual issue, Evil dwells in the imagination and thoughts, which is of the devil, and it brings on emotions and stuff like that. And so you're possessed in your physical mind and body, your physical mind and body, and that's what is controlling you. That's what makes you feel a certain way, but the world call it everything but what it is. You're possessed by evil, and you can't overcome it once you see that it's not you, the Father would take that away from you. Everyone wow. who has anger is mentally ill, possessed with the spirit of evil. It's not anything else but that. I 100% agree with that. Amazing. All the way. Have you forgiven your mother? Yes, I have. You went to her? Yes. How did it go? Um... Well, she told me that, oh, wow, you've been listening to uh, too much conservative stuff and you don't make any sense whatsoever. And uh, I'm afraid and I'm going to go to the family and tell everybody what you're saying. That's what they do. They build an army against you because they're not ready to face what's happening with them. Yeah, I'm just happy and grateful that I did it. Nice. I got that out of the way. And how so. about your father? Um, I haven't forgiven him yet, but I plan on doing that very soon. If you can say, what is it that you need to forgive him for? Uh, not being able to protect me from my mother. Yeah. And they're no longer together. He lives, uh, separately. Right. So he, he escaped her hell. But, <laughs> but he left you in the hell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, good, man. Go and forgive him. And I'm telling you, you got to have, if you stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, overcome thoughts. Overcome thoughts. And he, well, when you overcome thoughts, you're going to overcome emotions, period, because it's a natural, it's an unnatural state. It's the nature of evil. And so if you stay with it, you got to have paradise right here on earth. Right. Yep. Oh. And um, last, last thing yes. that I wanted to ask is, uh, will you be coming out with any merch of the Great White Hope? Um, will we, Hake? I know we already have the hoodie uh, at, uh, on our website at rebuildingtheman.com slash store. That's a really good question, Chris. I'm going to have to get with the team and see if we can. Do we have mugs or anything with the Great White Hope? Yeah. Yeah, we have, t we have the Great White Hope T-shirts and all that stuff, I think. Go to. I mean, I have. Remember, I wore that t shirt. Oh, yeah. Go to rebuildingtheman.com slash store. We have some stuff there already. Okay, gotcha. I didn't see any of him. Yeah, I'm looking at but a, a hoodie. It's over on the Society 6 uh, JLP talk store. 
The Great White right, Hope well. in uh, white ink or black ink. All right, I'll have to check that out then. Cool. All right. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. Have a good one. You too, buddy. All right. Bye. bye now. Amazing. Amazing question from a person that's seeking the truth. Seek first the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, all be at it. Return to the Father. Life is about a return to the Father. There's nothing else but that. Everything else is an illusion. You're fighting an illusion within yourself and outside of you, inside of others. You are your world. Everything that's happening to you is happening inside of you. It ain't happening out there. It's in you, folks. Your, the anger you have is in you. The thoughts you have about yourself and others is in you. The thoughts you have about what others are thinking about you is in you. Overcome that, you could be free. Christ came that all who want to be free shall be free. Super Chat. Super Chat. Super, super. super chat. Evgeny Crosby with a couple of diamonds yesterday. Sheila Jackson Lee is cleaning out her office while watching church with J.C. Lee Peterson. <laughs> That's for sure. She, if anyone needs it, it's Sheila Jackson Lee. Thank you. Is she leaving? On that midnight train to Georgia. I don't know. I think she wrote it for mayor or something. Wow. Now, those people in Texas have to be totally out of their mind. On pot. To vote for that woman, if she is running for mayor, but I think she's running for mayor down there in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> and if they vote for her after the mess up she's done in Congress, then y'all deserve what you got. She lost her race for Houston mayor, and she's nice. trying to run again. Something like that. R running for her life. If Terrible. anybody asks, what's the matter with me? Oh, she's, so she's trying to run for her re-election uh, the house seat, because she lost for mayor. Then they need to go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody asks, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm saved, sanctified, and running for my life. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Re Nessio bought a coffee. Jesse, I have to walk my dog around the neighborhood so he can do his business. People say he's cute. There's nothing I can do about that. Hashtag Beta Monday. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Wave, oh, Wavy oh, Patch Mason. bought a coffee. Wavy Patch says, isn't Jesus just an angel number one whose name was Michael in heavens before he was sacrificed to earth by his father? Remember, Satan used to be Lucifer and there was Gabriel too, etc. What? <laughs> I never heard that one Man, either. either. What? The? <laughs> you might be reading that all over up by Bible. Probably. Soul Conscious bought five coffees. Jesse, I've noticed since being born again, I've never had to riz. Only the ladies do it now. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but so my friend just texted me and said that that woman, Sheila Jackson Lee, is running for a congregation. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned that. Yep. Thank you, friend. Uh, I hate mentioning that just now. I got to take a short break, another hour to go. When I come back straight to your calls and super chats, and, and I got some amazing news items for you as well. Hate is coming in with the hate news, not the fake news. I'll be back in a moment. Steve, thank you for calling and thanks for holding. How have you been helped by the show? I'm going to tell you this. I believe you might go down in history as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, black man that ever lived on planet Earth, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know anybody before you that's been that great. You know, freeing the slaves is one thing, but you've been freeing people of their mind, which matters. It should be, anyhow, to you more than anything else, because with the mind not being right, there ain't nothing else going to happen right anyway. If you can doubt every thought because you're not your thoughts, if you can doubt Every thought, knowing that you are not your thoughts, you don't create them, they are not from God, that they're from the deceiver, the great deceiver, Satan. If you can doubt every thought, you can be free, just like that. At an instant, bring every thought into captivity. It's so amazing. Oh, 
lot of mess going on in the world. This is the end of hour two of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show already. It is Tuesday, December 12th, A.D. 2023, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. Stay tuned for hour three, last hour of Country and Western Tuesday. Coming right up with JLP. Back to your calls, and we are still catching up on the Super Chats from yesterday and today. But first, Hake News, not Fake News. There is one line open. You can call in right now during Hake News and get in line. Uh, the Israel-Palestine war drama. I mentioned last hour the far-left female run outlet, The Skim, claims that the Washington Compost had an analysis saying Israel used U.S.-supplied white phosphorus in southern Lebanon in October. White phosphorus ignites when it makes contact with oxygen and can cause deep burns. Sounds nasty. The so-called international law doesn't ban whatever that is, right? Doesn't ban the substance, but experts consider its use against civilians illegal. Uh, Israel reportedly said that they can they used it to create a smoke screen. Still, the U.S. said that they are concerned by the report. Meanwhile, Zara has pulled a controversial ad campaign following backlash. The images show a model carrying a mannequin wrapped in white fabric and statues with missing limbs. Critics say that uh, it resembled photos of corpses in Gaza wrapped in white cloth. The company said the launch was inspired by men's tailoring from past centuries and that the photos were taken before the outbreak of the violence in October in Israel and Palestine. The pressure is mounting on Harvard University President Claudine Gay. She's that black one to step down. Some doubt she will, right? She's black and shameless. That's one of the things I like about the blacks. Uh, some criticized Matt Claudine Gay, like University President Liz McGill, for her refusal to condemn unequivocally calls for genocide, supposedly, of Jews on campus. Still. More than 700 Harvard faculty members have signed a letter backing this black woman, evil black woman. Claud- She's into the blackness mess. Claudine Gay is uh, expected to hear a decision on her position today. She pushed that diversity, equity, and inclusion to the hilt and past the hilt. Sick. Anyway, your daily dose of Ukraine propaganda. Ukraine's unchristian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, will come face to face with U.S. lawmakers today on Capitol Hill. Maybe he already has. I think he already has, right? With a desperate plea for more aid to defend his country and kill more Ukrainians and Russians against Russian invasion. I heard they basically already lost. It's his third U.S. visit since Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022 A.D., appears unlikely to shift the position of the senators hesitant to greenlight more funds. Many Republicans, even those who support additional funding for Ukraine, aren't willing to do more unless demon rats uh, agree to major policy changes around the U.S. southern border in exchange, which the border is a far greater and more dire situation for us in America. And it would only fund more killing, by the way, in Ukraine anyway, so who cares? It remains to be seen whether evil Zelensky can make the convincing pitch as he meets with evil President Crooked Joe Biden and House Speaker Mike Johnson. That, that, he's pushy, soft, cushy guy. <laughs> and others in the coming hours, which already happened, I guess. Uh, your daily dose of climate propaganda, climate advocates, and the international negotiators at the COP28 climate talks in Dubai bitterly divided over a new draft of the core agreement dropped the mention of phasing out fossil fuels. The draft proposed Monday called on countries to take actions to reduce so-called planet warming emissions, which could uh, include reducing the consumption and production of oil, coal, and gas. Manly stuff. Many uh, climate experts have blasted the vague language in a lack of concrete timelines. They're not such experts. They're activists. The fossil fuel industry, so-called was given record uh, access to the conference. Nice. A recent analysis showed. Meanwhile, in the United States, a group of 18 California children are suing the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, in federal court, saying they've harmed children's health over the decades, intentionally allowing pollution. (laughs) What a mess. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. Hour 3. Got 
Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show already. There are two lines open if you want to jump in. A couple of people dropped. You can call 888-7753-773-888-77 Jesse. My biblical question for this week. Do you worship yourself. Do you worship yourself? Do you worship yourself? Amazing question. We have every way to watch and support the show listed on jessileepeterson.com slash show. jessileepeterson.com slash show. And if you're busy selling fentanyl or buying fentanyl or down in Mexico about to take fentanyl, that's mixed with other medication, or if you're trying to get across the borders and they've already given you your iPhone or whatever you may be doing, working out, making breakfast, dinner, lunch around the world, or it's so late, you're just relaxing in bed. You can watch the show, you can podcast, but you can also be listening live at 641 793 1500. 641 Seven nine three one five zero zero on the uh, iPhone, iPad. All right, and you can podcast the shows. Follow us on Rumble dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Rumble, you got to know how to Rumble dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson and Cozy dot TV slash JLP. And to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee dot com. Slash JLP Talk, buy me a coffee.com slash JLP Talk, or rebuildingtheman.com. Rebuildingtheman.com. You can also donate at Bond JLP Cash App. Bond JLP Cash App. All right. Um, it's Tuesday, the third hour of the show already. And every Tuesday is Country and Western Tuesday. All, all of my life. faults where well, they've all been lies. They let me down every single time because the devil's been making homes inside my head. The good, the bad. Glad to sad if I could let them all go and give them to God. Well, maybe you take this anger from my soul and I'd shine like a light that's too bright to see. And I could lean on God so He can lean on me. Perfect peace. Amazing. Amazing. That is an amazing song. Pete, right? From Hawaii, from uh, Alaska. Alaska. Pete, that is an amazing song, Pete. What the? Uh, thank you for that. I have said over and over again that our battle is a spiritual battle and that it starts in the home and that the parents are not right. And if they're not operating from the natural right nature, they screw up their own children. And then the world, when they go out into the world, the world takes over. But you can be free of all that. And you can lay your weapons down and let the world just fight. You have no part in it. You can be Nick. 
really, and icy. It's up to you. And white people, I have been warning you for 30-something years that you need to wake up and speak up and get involved because they're coming for you. They're jealous of you. They hate you. And they're jealous and they want to destroy you rather than learn from you and get better with their own lives. They'd rather get rid of you and create hell on earth. And white people have been on attack for a long time now. I, I, I used to write for WordNetDaily.com and other uh, uh, sites. And I always talked about it on my shows and everything. When they were doing the knockout games, when they blame white people. When you hear the people of color blaming you, they're telling you out loud they hate you. And they blame you for being a failure, for them being a failure with no talent, no ability, and they're jealous because their hearts are wicked. And I told you that just as they've done in South Africa, Mommy Africa, white people, when there was apartheid over there, it was amazing over there, beautiful. And they intimidated the whites, Nelson Mandela and all those guys, just like the NAACP have done here and the, the uh, uh, so-called civil rights movement, same thing happened over there. And Nelson Mandela, uh, communist, they intimidated the white, they called them racist, they blamed the white, they did this and that, and the white said, okay, we're going to let you have this beauty that we have built. We're going to go back out to the farmland, y'all leave us alone. And they didn't leave the whites alone. They followed them to the farmlands and robbing and stealing. The blacks did. And are doing. And stealing and killing and breaking into their homes and everything. Because it's evil. Anyone that has anger is an evil person. And you should not, cannot, and should not, ought not, ain't or not, trust them. They will turn on you. Even in the Word, in the beginning, there was the Word. The word said that anyone that has anger is evil. It's a murderer. Never trust an angry person. Now, you don't run around in life just not trusting, meaning that emotionally making yourself not trust. But just know you're dealing with an angry person. I don't care if it's parents, family members, whomever, party people you party with, or whomever. Just know this person is angry and cannot be trusted. Your mama, you heard the call and call earlier and said, hey, mama, he went and forgave his mama. She went and told, and says she was going to build a, a, a war against him because that's what angry people do. They cannot stand alone. And I've been telling the whites that they're coming for you in this country in the same way they have done in Africa, the blacks toward the white. And lo and behold, it, Africa is in full play. It is just happening now in America. They went out to the farmland after the whites. They are now going out to the suburbs in America after the whites because their hearts are evil. It has nothing to do with slavery, nothing to do with Jim Crow, Nothing to do with the lack of opportunity, nothing to do with resources, but the lack of character. I heard of somebody either on Nick show or the hate report or maybe during a Friday TV, but I think it was, it may have been, a, it was either Nick or the anchor baby or hate saying that black people have a problem because they didn't have it uh, or, or something stupid like that. It was because of the lack of character. Because black people have everything they need and want, but they, they have no character, they have no love. And not all blacks, not all, not all, not all. Many of them are starting to wake up, to be honest, when they hear the truth. They need to forgive their mothers. But I told you that they were coming to, to the suburbs in this country. We, you have all the wrong people in the right places to make sure South Africa happens in America. This is from the Detroit, Detroit Press. The videos show men dressed 
all in black, using special equipment to quickly breach windows, enter mansions, and escape quickly with, with currency, jewelry, and safes. Watch this from ABC. Gangs from South America are breaking into multi-million dollar homes across the country and now in Metro Detroit. And police say they're highly functional and well-trained. The guy to the right in the middle, that's a jammer. So he's jamming signals right now. Those jammers then render the Wi-Fi security systems useless. At least 30 to 40 homes wow. have been hit since September in Detroit. And thieves getting away with cash, jewelry, expensive handbags in minutes. You know, a lot of this stuff is being packed up in the boxes for shipping as they're driving away from your home. Officers are now forming a task force urging homeowners to have multiple layers of security. Amazing. Multiple layers. You can't get enough of it. White people. You can't run, you can't hide. You have to put your feet on solid brown grounds and say no. Why do you think the blacks and the liberal whites who are running our government, our police department, so-called mayors and things, they make sure that the police don't come back. They don't bring the cops back and fund the police. They don't bring back bail bond. They're not putting these people in jail. They're doing everything but that because this is what they want. They want that. And blacks have been encouraged for years. Don't destroy your own neighborhood. Go to the suburbs. And look what's happening. There's nowhere to run in life. And the blacks don't care. Their hearts are evil. Their mothers have turned them from their fathers, which turned them away from God. And they've been told by the world, it's not your fault. We're going to let you out of prison. When it's not your fault. We're going to get rid of police. It's not your fault. Commit as many crimes as you want. You can walk right through the court and back, back out on the streets. It's going to get worse. And they want, they want you to be angry. That's why they push anger as a norm. Because anyone that has anger has no self-control at all. You're out of control inwardly. You have fear. You have loneliness. You have doubts. You have worries. And they know it because Satan is their God. They know how to move you too. They want you having fear. They want you having fear. So the suburb, you can't hide no more. You've been set up. You can't hide. And you're not going to hear about this all over the media. They, gonna, they want these blacks doing this. Blacks were created for this reason now, to bring destruction. Look at the black woman from that university who said the same thing about the Jews that the white woman said. The white woman, God... And they're trying to keep the black woman at the university. What's the name of that university again? Harvard. They need the blacks to be there because they know that not all, not all, not all, not all, but most blacks welcome destruction. They hate themselves. They hate others. They hate everything. Nothing good in them. Not all, but most. That's why they're not going to get rid of her, though they're trying not to get rid of her. They want a civil war. They want a civil war. I have a perfect example of that. I have a... Look, folks, y'all need to be trying to work on yourself and wake up. They want you angry. They want you overreact. That's what the devil wants inside of you. The devil pretend to be you so you can overreact within yourself and he become alive even more so because you think it's you and it's not you. You're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. So-called good ones or bad ones. They're not you, but you think they are. You keep overreacting. Somebody call your name, you get mad. 
Somebody don't like you, you get mad. Somebody don't want to play with you no more, you get mad. Somebody don't want to be married to you anymore, you get mad. And it's not you. It's the spirit of evil that made a home in you, but you call it you. They want a civil war. What I'm about to show you, pay attention, and I want you to answer the question, who would have been blamed had this woman who had been accused of this not been caught? This is from CBS. Authorities said a 26-year-old woman has been arrested on allegations she attempted to set fire to the birth home of Martin Luther King Jr. Watch this from Fox. Watch this. Henderson, I did not set a bond in your case today. Fulton County Magistrate Judge Holly Hughes denied 26-year-old Lanisha Henderson bond Saturday. Hughes gave two reasons for doing it. First, that Henderson doesn't live in Georgia. She gave an address in a different state, so I find that there is a likelihood that she may not return to court. Second was the shocking nature of the crime. I'm extremely concerned about the randomness of this event. Uh, there does not seem to be any reason or uh, tied to that particular location. And I do believe that based on that alone, uh, given the complete and utter randomness that she does pose a danger. Um, I think we all know that this is on video. Uh, so, you know, you clearly see what she's doing. The entire thing has been recorded. She is According to report, putting gas on the home of Martin Luther King, birth home, with the attempt to set it on fire. But, and I saw another story where two, it looked like two white guys happened to be walking by at the time. And they were like, what are you doing? And they saw her open up the can because it wouldn't splash at first. And she, they, she took the cap off and started dashing it on like that. What do you think would have happened had they not caught her to see that it was a black person doing it? Right now, this country would be on fire. Statues would be torn down. White people would be on serious attack right now. They would be blaming white supremacy. They would be blaming skinheads. They would be blaming uh, white people. They would be blaming Donald Trump. And his voters. That woman's name is Lashashi. Oh, what the Lanisha Chantries. If I had a name like that, I'd burn out of the house too. What the? <laughs> <laughs> you know that's a black name. Lanisha Chantries Henderson, according to the report. There would be Al Shopner would be riding his horse right into town. Obama, if I had a daughter, she would look like that. Lanisha Shanti. All the children of Satan would be coming out of the woodwork and the country would be destroyed. They want civil war. They would, if this had not been caught in this way, they would, they would not have even mentioned it was a black woman, black female. They want a civil war. Why don't you overcome anger so you can't be manipulated and controlled not only by these evil people, but anyone or anything or any situation? Anger is not your natural nature. Love is your natural nature. Not mama's love. That love is evil. The love that comes from the father. According to Fox, according to, this is from Fox, according to officials, the accused woman is a decorated military veteran. What the? She's been accused of trying to set Martin Luther King house on fire. Her birth home. If she had gotten away with that, it would be all over. And the, and, the, and the black rioting would last all the way through the summer all the way to election time, and then if they were able to get Joe Biden back in there, it would end. Y'all need to wake up. 
you're being used, you're being played. Some people are waking up, though. Not all, not all, not all, but some. Because only a few want that straight, they want what's right, the straight and narrow path. They want the truth. But some are waking up. Here's from Newsmax. Donald Trump is picking up support in the Bronx, one of New York City bluest area. Watch this from Newsmax. The Bronx is the bluest of New York City's boroughs and the only borough with the Hispanic majority. President Biden got 83 percent of the vote here in 2020. Biden and his press secretary said that prices are going down. Is that your experience or is that not true? No, that is definitely not true. Prices are definitely going up. Minority communities, we're not seeing the improvement. Uh, I, I, there's inflation with everything, food, gas, insurance prices. I mean, you name it. Oh, I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna have to go for Trump. You could say anything to Biden right now who says that the economy is improving, especially in black and brown communities. What would you say to him? That's lies. I believe that's lies. Heavy lies on that, for sure. Uh, bring back Trump. We have money. We have money when Trump was president. Free my son Trump! Free my son Trump. Trump 2024, everybody. Because I feel like it was much better when he was here financially for everybody. He made sure we had money in our pockets. <laughs> when Trump was president, my life was good. And Amazing. They think that you don't know for yourself that things are not working well. And they are getting up there and lie to you. Oh, the economy is good. And if it's not good, oh, it's Trump fault. Because they, you have voted for them so many years. But I really want you to consider this woman who had been accused of trying to set Martin Luther King home on fire, birthplace on fire. They want you mad. They want a civil war. Don't do it. They're going to lock you down and never let you set you free. They're they going to put change on you. Do not stop. You know what? Give this a try for a week. Don't overreact to anything anymore and see what happens. In your personal life and public life, don't overreact. Just don't overreact. Be still and see what change happened with you. The world tells you to overreact, but God tells you not to react. Who are you going to believe? Do not overreact. The New York Post has reported that Megyn Kelly warned that the country would burn if Republican frontrunner Donald Trump is jailed ahead of Election Day. Watch this from Megyn Kelly. This is one of the reasons why I said if, if this Judge Chutkin in D.C., this federal judge, because we assume Trump's going to get convicted in that case. I mean, the smart bet would be this D.C. jury convicts him because they hate him politically. Ninety-two percent voted for Joe Biden, and she hates him. Um, that if they, if she puts him in jail pending appeal before the election, the country's going to burn. There is no way the Trump base is not going to be beside itself with anger. Well, yeah, and you know, speaking of violence, that's what you're going to get. But I'm just being honest here. If you leave people no alternative and people are like, wait, I have no economic power. You've devalued my currency. So it's like eleven dollars for a dozen eggs and my vote doesn't matter anymore. Well, then what do I have? Like, what power do I have? Amazing. You always have a choice and the choice is always the first choice not to overreact. Really, stop reacting. It's not you anyway that's overreacting. It's the spirit of evil in you that you think is you because you've been identified with it. That's overreacting so it can stay alive and destroy you. So God forbid, but they end up putting the great white hope in jail on election or during election or during the voting time. Stay calm and vote for him anyway. You can still vote. You don't have to overreact. So they want you to overreact. Do not overreact. And then they can't lock you up. Just, oh, okay, the president, the great white hope is in jail. I'm going to vote for him anyway. And go vote. 
you don't have to overreact to life. And when you get to know yourself, you're going to understand that. Grace out of Rhode Island is, uh, Grace, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. How are you doing? All is well, Grace. Thank you for calling. Absolutely. Um, Jesse, I need your help. Okay. I am, I, I called in about two or three months ago. I don't know if you remember, but I, I told you a story about uh, how my mother accused me of like stealing her man by getting close to my dad. <laughs> and I asked you if I should live with my dad. And you said, you said I should stay with him. I don't know if you remember, but it's fine if you don't. But, yeah, um, never ask a black, per- a black person if he remembers. <laughs> <laughs> you said I should deal with my problem myself. Okay, so, so I've been living with my dad, and I think I forgave my mother. You said, I told you what happened with my mother, that it sounded like I forgave her. But I have a sort of sort of unresolved issue that I, I'm, I, I want your help Are with. you streaming right so, now? Yes, I am. I'm streaming on my channel on YouTube, yes. Oh, you are? Hold on a minute. I'm going to let Sean talk to you about that. I don't know if that coach you or not. But don't hang up. Hold on. And I'll come back to you. Um, Jessica is a first-time call out of Florida. Jessica, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi. How are you? All this well. Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> my first time calling. Welcome. Um, yeah, so basically, I don't know, uh, my life, well, my, my life and my family's life has been in turmoil. Sorry, excuse me, language, I didn't think I was going to cry, I don't like to cry. Just relax and let it roll. <laughs> <laughs> my life is basically, mine and my family's life has been in turmoil since like 2019. Um, I'm an only child, and I was raised by my mom and her sister, and uh, my mom got diagnosed with cancer, and so therefore, being the only child, I had to, I have a husband and I have a son, but, you know, I had to take the responsibility of being a caregiver with her, and um, my aunt was doing okay, they're, they're older, you know, I'm, uh, they're older and I'm in my um, late thir- 30s, um, but my aunt was doing okay, long story short, you know, my mom had terminal cancer. Um, and she passed away almost two years ago. Um, and the fact is, is I, I knew she was going to pass away and I knew I took care of her for two and a half years, um, before she passed away. And, um, my plan was, of course, once she passed away is to get back to my regular life. However, um, I think my aunt, I don't know what happened, but she basically, she gave up on living and now she's bedridden. And it's a uh, physical therapy's been out here, and she, she they don't see any they don't she just and so now I'm stuck taking care of her as well, and um, and it's a fight to get her to just you know do her exercises, and I and I, I hate getting angry with her. Like today, I had to get I got angry with her, and it's just because she just I don't know God I don't God bless me with a great son. I don't have any anything I but like with her she acts like a child slash teenager and um Jessica hold know. on for me let me take a quick break mm-hmm. all right yeah okay hold on the treasure chest is now on um, open on d <laughs> let me take a quick break 888-7753-773 back in a moment Check out my book, For Rage to Responsibility. I show you how I was able to overcome anger. The spirit of anger was taken away from me. I had it. And as a result of having anger, I was insecure. I had doubt, worry, fear. 
I was in a fallen state and didn't know it. And it wasn't until I went and forgave my mother who tried to turn me away from my father. I forgave my father for not being there and returned back to him. My spirit connected with his spirit and through him, I was able to return to God and I have perfect peace. Perfect love cast out anger. And when anger is gone, fear and doubt, worry, insecurity, suicidal thoughts, all of that is gone and you are free. Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, or if you want an autographed copy, you can go to my website at rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-BOND. Okay, uh, welcome back. A um, couple quick announcements. The Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour. The Hake, H-A-K-E Report, dot com from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And then and James Hake is on fire. He ain't playing around. He ain't got that good half for nothing. He's on fire. And then Joel Friday TV every Tuesday. At 11 a.m. Pacific time, Joel Friday TV. He black, and you don't want to miss it. And after Joel Friday, the American Anchor Baby. The American Anchor Baby flying high. Not off fentanyl, not off pot, not off alcohol, but natural energy given to him. By God. And you don't want to miss the American Anchor Baby. And don't forget, Merry Christmas. I do personal shout-outs for you. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Birthday, Congratulations, Encouragement, whatever. Go to Cameo, C-A-M-E-O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. C-A-M-E-O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson for personal shout outs, all right? And I will do them for you. I want to go quick wanna go quickly back to Jessica, first time call out of Florida. And Jessica uh, uh said that she on, only child, she took care of her mother, her mother expired, now she's stuck with her aunt. And her aunt is a mess. And Jessica, you have one son, you say? Yes, I have a son. Are you married? Yes, I'm married. And so why are you stuck with your aunt? Um, well, she basically, she raised, she helped raise me. So my whole life, she, uh, she was my, whenever I said my parents, my friends knew I meant my mom and my aunt. And, um, so I just, I, I feel... Uh, she's 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 like my she's like my second mother. And did you make a promise to her that if she would take care of you, that you would take care of her when she became a mess? <laughs> um, I mean, and I, I I I mean, it was kind of written. I didn't I didn't really have to promise. I mean, it's just like how I took care of my mom. I didn't promise my mom I would take care of her, but did I you, did. Did you make a promise to your aunt? I mean, no, but I mean, she 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 took care of me when I was younger. So, did you just, did, do you want to be dealing with her now? <laughs> Honestly, um, no, but I mean, I but I but I love her like my I love her like I'm like my mom my own mom. So, and your question for me is what is I don't know. I just have just. I don't know. I just have this re resentment towards her for her because the reason why she's bedridden is because she decided just to not walk one day, and and then that that caused drop foot and stuff like that. And so I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm just trying to find the the strength to not be so frustrated or 
I don't know. And so your question I don't for know. me is what? <laughs> <laughs> your question just, for me is what? How, how to, I don't know, how to not be so angry at her. By putting her in an old folks, old folks home today? And no, for, no, for, no, 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 no. By, by not just by letting go her, of the resentment. And for giving her for impo- for her impose her life on you, you don't yeah. owe her anything. You're not obligated in any way at all. When you were a child, you didn't ask her to take care of you, and and you're doing it not out of love. You're doing it out of hate. You've been forced to do it with a false guilt. Or if you didn't do it, oh, I don't love her. I'm wrong. You need to drop the anger. So if, by forgiving her for what she has done to you and go live your life. And if you want to go visit, you will go on your own without any sense of obligation at all. You do not owe her one thing, not at all. Yeah, yeah, that is, but that's understandable. So you need to forgive <laughs> her for her imposing her life on you like this? And because that's why you're doing this out of guilt. You have a false sense of obligation, and you're you're locked in prison, not only within yourself, but in your own home. That's true. (laughs) So why don't you forgive her and then go put her in a home and let people who have been trained to take care of her, and when you want to go visit, go visit. If you don't, don't. Why not finally do it the right way? Yeah, that's true. That was a question. Why not finally do it the right way? Yes. You because I like you I, you. I don't know. Like you said, I just I feel obligated and out of guilt for her because like like she like I said she was a, she was like a second mom. But that I, wasn't your issue. That's hers. And yeah. obligation, feeling obligation, and feeling guilt is not love. It's hate. That's why yeah. you don't have peace with it. If you were doing something out of real love, you would have perfect peace on the inside. But you hate her. You don't love her because she's you, and anger is hatred. And you hate mm-hmm. this woman for what she's done to you. It was bad enough. Your mother imposed her life on you. You were stuck with her. And now you're stuck with another hag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not responsible, well, Jessica. Go put her in a home today and start living your life. For, okay, well. Forgive her for imposing her will on you like this and setting you up like this. Okay, yeah, that's that's definitely a, a, something to think about and to definitely, I completely understand. Do you, does it make sense? It does make sense. I am, I am angry because I, and I'm sick of being angry. And if you're sick of it, then forgive her and God will forgive you and make you free why is your husband allowing this to happen to you? I I I, I couldn't tell you. He's actually his mom. <laughs> my husband hasn't. <laughs> that's another issue in on itself. My husband, his mom got diagnosed with cancer around the same time my mom got diagnosed with cancer, and she passed the year early before my mom. And my husband hasn't really. My husband hasn't worked since. What do you mean he hasn't worked since? He, my husband hasn't had a job since 2019. Why? I couldn't tell you. Why are you, <laughs> why are you married to him if he can't take care of you? He he used to. But why I've are you been mar- married? I'm sorry? Why are you married to him now and he can't take care of you? Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I I think I said I ask myself that all the time. <laughs> you ask what? I ask myself why am I? I ask myself that all the time too. And what does self say when you ask self? No, I'm just saying I ask myself, and myself just says, I don't know. Just I sometimes you just get stuck. I don't know. You know, the only thing that you're stuck with is anger. And you can't see your way out. You need to forgive your husband for being weak. You need to forgive your mother for imposing her life on you, making you feel guilty and obligated. 
you need to forgive your this other woman, your aunt. And God, don't ask for forgiveness. Hey, folks, I'm sorry for resenting y'all for being weak, for imposing on me. And God will forgive you so you can go live your life, Jessica. Yeah, I, I agree. Are you going to do it? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah. No, yeah, you're not. Gonna... <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> you love your misery. You're not, gonna, you're not sick of your misery yet. You love the thrill of feeling angry, feeling obligated, feeling imposed upon all these messed up people around you. It makes you feel good and feel bad, but you love both feelings. I don't, I don't think I, I mean, I wouldn't say I love it. It's just, I don't know how to, I don't know. I just never... I don't know. With my husband, it's just... I I left him once. I did, and but I did. I came back. Why? For more misery. I told you you love your hell. You came back to hell. Yeah. I don't... I... I but I, I will definitely take your your words and, and I will definitely think I don't, I mean, I don't love my misery. Trust me. I don't. Well, if you don't love your misery, you will overcome your misery by dropping the anger, forgive them. They can help themselves, all three of them, all of them. And God will forgive you. Then you can see how to live your life because your husband, your mama, your aunt, nobody owe you anything and you don't owe them anything. Zero. Except not to resent. Don't be angry. You know, yeah. your husband have nothing to give, and no. you have nothing to give to him. Yeah, you're right. So why stay in hell then if you don't love it? Oh. Oh, what a I mess! Can't get rid of him. I tried to get rid of him before. I did. I I tried to kick him out of the house, Is and he, he wouldn't leave. <laughs> so why would you pack up and leave? Because it's my house and it's my name. Sell the house. I'm sorry? Sell the house. So, yeah. Yeah, I could do that. When you ask him to leave, what does he say? He he just fights with me and and, and he, um, I, I don't know, he just, he fights with me and calls me names and then he just, you know, he, he'll say he'll leave, but he, he never, he doesn't. I don't have any money to go anywhere. So. How old is he? <laughs> um, he's in his late 40s. Are you serious? He's young. Why doesn't he work? Um, he, I mean, the big part is he is, he was a landscaper. And so that I do know the landscape, he needs to get on disability, but he's too lazy to do that. Um, he was a landscaper for since he was 20 years old, and that does a lot on a man's, you know, on a person's body. And he's he is I, he's like I said, he's late 40s, so his body is pretty messed up from that. But there's I can't make him, you know what I mean? I can't make him. I've told him, you know, I everything I do, I do for my well for my son. How you know, old is your son? He's he. He's, um, <laughs> he'll be 16. 16? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, very soon. But everything I do, I do for my son, and I, um, everything that we have is because of me and me making the right choices for him and stuff, but I can't make my husband, I, I can't make my husband find out how to get on disability, you know what I mean? Like, I, I. That's not my job. Right. <laughs> but is, you you don't have to take care of him, though. No, I don't I don't have to take care of him or anything. Yeah. But um, everything I do, I do <laughs> it for you. Yeah. I so can't I think, help it and not worth fighting more. <laughs> Listen, Jessica, here's my best advice. Drop mm -hmm. your anger. Forgive your husband for being weak. Forgive your mother for imposing her life on you, her will. Forgive your aunt. Get rid of your aunt. 
put her in an old home. You're not guilty. You don't owe her anything. And then stop fighting with your husband. Give up the fight. And you'll start seeing, you will, t- you will see that life will start working out. You'll see clearly. You will have no emotions about it. And you will see that God is with you. And it'll be amazing. But you got to drop the anger because that's where your pain is coming from. Your pain mm-hmm. is not coming from the situations outside of you. Your pain is coming from the anger inside of you. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And I, I can say, yeah, I need to drop the anger. Yeah, drop the anger. Those people have problems too. But you need to start working on you. Don't argue with anyone anymore. And just start yeah. working on you. Forgive. I'm sorry for resenting you, husband. I'm sorry for resenting you, Aunt, Aunt, Aunt May May. I'm sorry <laughs> for re- getting, getting your mama. And God will forgive you, and I promise you things will start to work. It'll be clear. Because all of your misery is inside of you, and nobody is to blame for that but you. Yeah. No, I, I understand that. But um, you give me a lot to think about, and I appreciate it. And thank you, and you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. You too. Week. You too. So have you heard about the silent prayer, my silent prayer? No, I haven't. Go to com slash prayer, rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer, so that you can learn to sit still, and God will bring you out of your imagination thoughts, and he will mm-hmm. He will light up your pathway, and you will see your way out of all this stuff. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. So, But you got to drop the anger because your misery is inside of you, not yeah. outside of you. Yeah, no, I completely understand. Sometimes it's hard, though, when you don't want to fight with your husband and they keep coming back at you but, and you walk away and no, they still follow you. <laughs> no. Right, but it's just, it's <laughs> only hard because he's making your ego upset. He makes you feel bad. That's not you. That's that false you inside of you. That's just the nature of the devil. So just don't argue bad. And whatever you're feeling, be glad to see what you're feeling so you can overcome that. Seeing it will cause you to overcome it. It's the spirit of evil. It's not you. Okay. I understand. Well, like I said, thank you so much, and you've given me a lot to think about. Okay, so for, lot to... forgive, do the silent prayer, work on you, and I promise you everything will work out. All right. Well, thank you so much, and you, like I said, have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of your week, okay? You and Merry t- Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas Happy to you. And let me know how it goes. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye now. Amazing. Super chat. Super chat. Super, super. super chat. Over on buymeacoffee.com slash JLP talk. Someone says, I realized the other day while my wife was tripping over nothing, the reason that the desperate God, please help me prayers don't work is because people s- praying in that manner are asking God to help them fix a sil- situation instead of asking God to fix it for them. Food for thought. Amazing. Thank you. Daniel bought a coffee. Can I have two wives and still be at peace? <laughs> You're not going to be at peace with one if you don't overcome yourself. Thank you. Prep Ham Paul Rumble supporter. Gen Z males changed charisma to Riz so they sounded less effeminate. Laughing face emoji with tears. <laughs> Thank you. Eli Jaw gave a diamond yesterday. Jews hate whites more than anybody. JLP tripping. Everybody hate the whites. Really, I'm telling you, they're jealous of the whites. This whole battle that you see happening is about getting rid of whites, including the white Jews. It's about they want to occupy land back in America and in Israel. It ain't about what you think it's about. But you know what? You don't want to see. You've been warned. Thank you. Shout out to the top contributors yesterday. Maverick something, Henry Ford Lives, Evgeny Crosby, WD41, and Kid Combo 1.0, and the rest of you guys, Games for Rec. Appreciate it. Thank you. This morning, Mike Young bought our coffee. Hey, Jesse, I want to be clear. I don't believe that uh, this John Whitmire guy, I guess the the governor or mayor, wouldn't be any better than Sheila Jackson Lee because they are both Democrats, but John Whitmire says that they would be tough on crime, then I'm willing to give him a chance. What do you think, Jesse? Thank you. I, I have no idea who you're talking about. Uh, Houston, Houston mayor? I don't know. Whatever. 
Sheila Jackson, Leah Pony. Yeah, I know Sheila Jackson. Leah ain't no good. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've not even heard who she's running against at all. Me neither. She lost. Well, who she lost to. Thank you. No fear. Just Faith bought her coffee. On April 16th, 1862, President Lincoln signed the District of Columbia Compensated e- Emancipation Act. The law prohibited slavery in the district, forcing its 900-odd slave owners to free their slaves, with the federal government paying owners reparations an average about $300, equivalent to 9000 in 2022 for each. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. That's not enough. Urinal <laughs> Chills uh, gave a rumble rant. Jesse and crew need to play Charlie Daniels, the late, great Charlie Daniels. You've had him on the show. Oh, yeah, I had Charlie. May his soul rest in peace. What this world needs is a few more rednecks for Country and Western Tuesday. He loved the lyrics. What the world need now is a few more rednecks. What an amazing place this would be. Thank you. See on a wit, see on bought a coffee. Good morning, Jesse. Love. Good uh, morning. Kiss face emoji. Who be the one to use to make Earl so mad? Eyes looking emoji. <laughs> Charles bought a coffee. Thank you, I can't believe the whites of today are the descendants of men that duel to the death. What the? Uh, I know, it's hard to believe. The weakness of white folks is mind blowing to me. I never imagined that it would go from, they would go from strength to weakness. How does that happen? It's amazing. Thank you. Seven exclamation marks. Stan sixty nine gave a couple of gave a few diamonds. JLP went from a uh, cowboy to slave in a chain gang. JLP singing Negro spirituals, swinging his pickaxe. Swing low, sweet <laughs> chariot, coming for to carry me home. Thank you, Stan sixty nine. Thank you, Stan sixty nine. I appreciate it. Andy Beck spot a coffee. Hello, Jesse and crew. I would like to answer the biblical question. Do you worship yourself? Do yes. Do you worship yourself? Yes, I worship myself by keeping a routine to keep me stable. And if I don't do <laughs> these things, hell will rise. Amazing. Interesting. I will put my two cents in on Sunday. Thank you. Brother Sonny over on Kick says, and a big howdy to you too, sir. How y'all do? Thank you. Over on a Rumble Puke Bucket donated and said, When you guys doing Metal Monday? What's Metal Monday? <laughs> I think he wants <laughs> you to play heavy metal on Monday. Oh. Some type of metal music. Thanks for the idea. I had not thought of that. Thank you. Amazing. And thank you guys. I do believe that that is all for now. Thank you all. I appreciate it. The Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour. Jason from Buffalo, New York. You're on the air. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Jason. Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas. I'm sorry? I said Merry Christmas. Hey, I got a question. Hey, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said, Jason. Oh, I said, I want to say Happy Holidays. How is fear? No, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. There ain't no holiday. It's Merry Christmas. It's a holiday. No, holiday. But go ahead. Hey, how is fear and appreciation the same thing? <laughs> fear and appreciation is not the same thing. That's what you said earlier. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I you didn't. told the lady. <laughs> when you talking to the lady. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? You said fear <laughs> and appreciate. You said, like, you said when you fear God, right. you appreciate the stuff that he did and all that. that you didn't say that? <laughs> Right. I, but that wasn't a lady. There was a guy that called about that. And he I've asked, been on hold for a minute. I'm sorry? I've been on hold for a minute, so I kind of lost track of it. Yeah. But he said that what does it mean to fear God because what he had been told didn't make sense. And I said that when you reflect on how you've overcome so much, you show appreciation. And that's what it means to fear God. So you said to fear or feel? Fear. Fear. So you're saying, and again, I asked you that. What is, like, how is, a pre- like, so that is appreciation. So when you say, like, dudes, we fearing people. So you're saying when white people fear black people, but they have an appreciation for black people. No, that's not the same thing. How you come up with that? What the? Because that's what you said. You talk Are about you a fear. Are you Christian? 
we go through this all the time. Come on, I know you only got but like so long. Come on, keep keep conversation moving. Yeah, because so you might not understand the ways of God because you're not a Christian. No, nah, okay, it's, it's not about understanding the ways. Of, like, I, but it's like, but you you don't want to understand the ways of God. No, I would want to understand how fear and appreciation is the same thing. I just told so you, it's show, it's a show, it's a show gratitude for overcoming the hell that you were living in. So what does that have to do with fear? <laughs> gratitude and fear. What, what does? Well, how do the two correlate? What else you want me to say? I, I told you. I want you to. I, I've answered I want, the no, question. No. But with, no, you didn't. What you said does not make sense. So what's your answer then? Since you're not accepting mine, what do you say? I say like, the, like you know what the fear of God is. The fear of God, is like to, to me, like to the, the essence of the fear of God is like the 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 shame factor as in Adam and Eve. To like your soul going to hell, that is like the fear factor. That's the that's only so thing that's, that's, that's I ever heard of. What you like? That's the only thing. Hold on, let me no, finish it. That is thing so that, dumb. That, I don't even know what this. Where you get that from? No, that's the like. That's the where only thing. That, that from? Like, the only thing I hold people. Where you that's getting the only that thing from? That when you tell people, where did you, you get like, that from? Because that's the punishment for like. Where did you get that from? Breaking. I ask. It's in your Bible. That is no, your punishment not. Jason, for not following. Call me tomorrow. I gotta run. Call me. The hate report is coming up now. Grace. Oh, Grace hung up, huh? I wanted to get back to Grace. Um. I'm out of time. Get on the street and narrow. Stay there. So, Grace, call me back tomorrow, all right? You know, Grace from Rhode Island. Grace is sufficient for me. Uh, Austin out of North Carolina. Mo out of Washington State. If somebody just hung up, I'm out of time. Get on that street and narrow, folks, because trouble on the land. There is trouble in the land. But it doesn't have to get to you if you overcome the world. All right? Do the silent prayer. Forgive your mama. Forgive your daddy for not protecting you from your mama. And the rest is easy. Oh, the hate report. Thank you all for the super chat. Uh, Joel Friday coming up at 11 a.m. And the American Anchor Baby 12. Bye. So, here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. I noticed after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way 
for men and women to return to the Father. 